Thank you. Welcome everyone tonight to the Williamsport City Council budget work session number one. It's Monday evening, November 30th, 2020. It's roughly five minutes after seven. Um, this is our uh, annual budget review. Uh, we have uh, items to go over tonight, departments and funds, and then we're going to finish the rest on Wednesday evening at seven. And then Thursday evening um, at 6.30, we'll have our regular council session, which is going to be brief, but it's also going to include uh, finishing up the first round of the budget and um, maybe making changes, whatever that night. Uh, that's usually the, the process we work through over the years. Um, so we'll get right into it tonight. Item one uh, under our budget review is the utility fund, River Valley Transit file. Um, so uh, we'll welcome Mr. Uh, Yo Winder tonight. Evening, how is everybody? We're all good, I think. <laughs> how, are you, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing fabulous. Um, I guess I just want to start this off with just so everybody's on the same page. We have operated within this budget for the last six months because RVT's fiscal budget goes from July 1st to June 30th. So council technically adopted this budget April 16th, 2020, um, when it was approved by the state and, and um, it was approved by resolution number 9019 with the um, local share. Um, so what I'm going to present, we've already used uh, about 23% of the budget. Um, operating expenses charged to report period, salaries and wages, operations, $2,038,693. Other operating expenses, $186,423. Um, salaries and wages other, $2,006,332. Other operating expense absences, $173,377. Fringe benefit costs, $2,383,328. Services, $406,920. Uh, fuel and lubricants, $406,920. Oh, I'm sorry, $372,174. Um, other materials and supplies, $344,366. Tires and tubes, $56,654. Utilities, $163,277. Casualty and liability costs, 140,697. Miscellaneous expenses, 269,650. Paratransit salary and wages, 10,174. Paratransit fringe benefits, $3,391. Purchase transportation paratransit, 136,344. Total operating expenses charged to report period, 8,690,801. Okay. Keep going. Um, applied reconciling items, planning expense, 104,203. PHTW, yeah. 21,588. Total operating expenses, eight million eight hundred sixteen thousand three or five eighty eight. I'm sorry. Non subsidy federal eligibility revenue, five hundred sixty five thousand twenty four dollars. Organization paid fares, one hundred fifty thousand four fifty six. Fare box revenue, non fixed route step ADA passenger fares. 21,704. Other federal eligible 
revenue, advertising, and charter, 100,000. Total non-subsidy federal eligible revenue, 837,184. Non-subsidy federal non-eligible revenue. Other federal, federal non-eligible revenue, 1,710,000, or 653. Total non-subsidy revenue, 2,547,837. Operating deficit, 6,268,751. Federal operating grant CARES, $1,135,811. Planning revenue, $64,187. Act 44, Section 1513, operating grant amount charged, state share, 4,642,549. Act 44, Section 1513, operating grant amount charged, local share, 426,204. $426, operating assistance, 6,268,751. That's the balanced budget. Any questions or anything from council tonight on the RBT budget? Yeah, Randy, if I can ask a sure, question. Yep. Um, just the difference. The difference between the budget and the total budget um, lines on this chart. Um, for instance, the budget and the total budget lines show at, at the very bottom of the chart show the same operating assistance of six million two forty seven. Um, ah, okay. And then the operating balance surplus is the total coming in from um, Clinton County. I see. Um, but explain to me since. By and large, the numbers in the uh, the numbers in the far right column seem to be less the Clinton County operating amount. Correct. For the total budget or the Clinton County. Total budget seems to be the the budget seems to be seems to include the Clinton County numbers, whereas the total budget does not. Correct. Correct? The, the, you want me to answer this? Yeah. The Clinton County is a demonstration grant. So when we do the total budget, it has all of our expenses. When you submit it to the state for the COA, the demonstration grant has to come out of that. That's what the 302-701 is at the bottom. The total expenses are 322. We have to include uh, a piece for the fare box revenue. That's the difference. So that's got to come out of your 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 expenses to start with, Clinton County comes out and then that's your state operating budget that gets submitted. After this year, we won't have the Clinton County demonstration grants over this year. Okay, are we moving forward with Clinton County in any capacity? Sorry about that. Or is that, or is that the, uh, um, where is, is the Clinton County grant over and, we're, and, and that's the end of our experiment? Um, PennDOT's evaluating the numbers currently. <clears throat> uh, it does not look promising. The numbers are not high enough to um, offset the cost to have the Clinton County piece keep running. Okay, understood. Um, and then uh, this budget obviously looks totally different from the budget that we saw last year for RBC. Um, help me to understand. I know we received some items earlier today that I haven't had a ton of time to review. Um, but, uh, and Adam, you'll be at the next budget session as well? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so mm -hmm. we can we can ask further questions on this if we have any next time too? Yep. Um, okay, awesome. Uh, um, only because it looks different than I'm, than I'm used to it looking in our budget packet. So I'm still sort of trying to reconcile what I'm, what, what, what I was expecting to see it with, with this. Um, Randy, I can yield any other questions. Okay. Thanks, Adam. Thanks. And Nicole. Um, Mr. Yoder. Uh, yeah, quick question. So I notice in here under um, operating assistance, the CARES grant, that's something that wasn't there last year. Um, 1.1 and change million dollars. Um, what would have happened if we wouldn't have had that money? Because it appears to me 
that we'd be in the hole, $1.1 million and then some, what would have happened in that scenario? Because that's two- money we can't rely on. And I'm going to assume if not next year, <clears throat> the years after. We have a $2.5 million federal operating grant that is for budget year 2021 that we haven't even applied for yet. We've got three years to apply for it. Okay. The, so feds, told us, the feds told us to use the CARES money first, but if CARES wouldn't have been here, that, would, that line item where it's 1.1 would have been 2.5. Okay. Yeah. And we actually have 7.2 altogether of the CARES money that we can use over the next three years. Correct. Okay. But Adam, if you don't mind, can I follow up on that real quick? Please do. Um, just trying to understand um, if that number were 2.5, where would that have gone? What services will be providing that we're not providing with this 1.1? Or sorry, just help me to understand. Um, or part of the 2.5 just would have been kicked into fiscal year 2021. Ask me that again. <laughs> what we have so you said the if the 1.5, sorry. The difference of the 1.1 versus the 2.5, what would we use that difference for? The 2.5, the 1.1 right now includes, it's lower than the 2.5 would have been normally because normally we didn't include under non-federal, other non-federal, non-eligible revenue. There are revenues in there that per the state and the auditors, we have to include that we hadn't included in past years on the report. So our 2.5 was used up and that money was used for other things. So what would happen is we would use our federal first, our 2.5 million, and then the 4.62 of our expenses didn't meet what our revenues were. Part of the 4.6 would have been deferred state money that you can use in your upcoming year. Okay. That makes sense. Somewhat. <laughs> it's this whole like being halfway through. No, it's just the whole being halfway through the budget year thing. You know, it's it's just a little hard to kind of like wrap your head around it because three years is differently. Um, and so we'll be moving forward with CARES money rather than other other federal allocations. It looks like for the next two to three years. Is that we have, correct? We- we have the 7.2 we can use over the next three years. We have the 2.5 that again, the feds are telling us don't apply for until we've exhausted the 7.2. We've got three years to apply for that. We haven't gotten our allocation for FY 21-22 from the feds yet. We'll get that in the spring. And then we'll have three years for that to apply. Got it. Um, okay. Uh, all right, Adam, yeah, I'm sorry to steal the floor from you. I was just trying to understand that a little better. Um, I think I got it. No worries. Um, Dave had his hand up. I have a couple other questions, but I'll let Dave go if he wants to go. Bonnie as well. So oh, sorry. I didn't try see to work everyone in. Um, I think Bonnie may have had her hand up earlier. The, the only thing that I would like to ask is you just you stated that Clinton County won't be part of this any this is the last year for Clinton County. Yes, ma'am. Uh I thought we were going for regionalization and with regionalization, we were able to get more funding for RBT. And if you're taking away from this, uh, would that create a problem with some of the funding that you might get? No, because what um, PennDOT is requesting that we do is um, basically pull Clinton County out, reevaluate everything, come up with new routes um, when I spoke to um, Deputy Secretary Granger, um, I explained to her that what our goal with River Valley Transit was to connect to all other transit agencies, help people get to wherever they want to go, whether it be State College, um, Southward, to connect to Rabbit Transit and get people to Harrisburg area, Lancaster area. Um, and she thought it was an excellent idea. She just felt that we needed to... Um, due to the funding restraints and COVID-19 dropping the numbers drastically in the Clinton County piece, we basically needed to not waste money on it at this time, let things kind of settle down, reevaluate, um, come up with new routes, um, and try to do another full study of the Clinton County piece. Um, at this time, we're averaging about eight riders a day, um, which is not very good. 
Uh, Lock Haven University was a key element in this, and with Lock Haven being closed down currently and not knowing when they're going to reopen, it does create some issues with PennDOT saying that they'll fund the um, operations in that area um, without knowing the numbers will come back. So it's a possibility that it will come back on the boards eventually if everything is, is back to, let's put in quotes, normal. Um, yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Can I understand? Eight passengers does not pay for the gas. No, it, it averages about, uh, what do we figure out, $150 a day per bus to run that piece. It's not cost effective right now. No, um, the numbers just are not there. Okay. And our, our, our biggest, uh, this, uh, I'm going to call it our biggest ticket item up there was the uh, Super Walmart Mill Hall. But you, you know, if you're going from Williamsport mm -hmm. to that Super Walmart, you're jumping on three different buses to get there. And it's just not feasible at this time. Okie dokie. Thank you. Um, Dave? Um, yeah, so I was just wondering why the Peter Hurdick Transportation Museum is not included in the total budget from the budget line item. Is that the one you didn't move over? 20,000. Is that the we, one? The, the packet you got today, I'm assuming you got today, has that corrected. It didn't pull okay. in. Yeah, her, that's that's her. why the total expenses are 8,816,588 versus what you have on the screen. It, it didn't carry itself over for some reason when we originally did it. And we okay. missed it. I apologize. All right. Thank you. Adam. Yeah. I mean, just a, a, a general comment. I, I think, um, you know I, know, we, I know we got a different one that has more detail um, today. I, I didn't get a chance to look at it. I think moving forward, the more information, the better will be helpful to answer a lot of our questions and what have you. I, I'm not sure why that one wasn't included in here, but um, some feedback for the future that something like that or what we got last year would be good. Um, so over the next few years, we've got seven point whatever million dollars of CARES money um, outside of trying to expand to touch all the other neighboring transit agencies. Um, what are the plans um, on how we're going to use that money? Um, what are, what are, Adam, what are you looking at as far as a strategy to leverage that money? How are you going to use it? Talk to me a little bit about that. Um, Please. The current plan is to basically hold on to as much as we can, not knowing what the future holds for funding. Okay. Um, so, I mean, we definitely want to keep things operating, keep our, you know, bus routes running, um, stay on time, stay on schedule. Our numbers are climbing right now. Um, we're at about 70% um, from what we were previous pre prior to COVID. So the numbers did tank for a while. Um, they are climbing back up. People are riding the bus again. Um, our current goal is just to keep everything functioning. We did put that 7.2 million completely in operating. Um, we did not look at any capital projects with it. Knowing that, you know, there's so many unknowns in the future. I know PennDOT's concerned about what their funding is going to look like in the 21-22 fiscal year. Um, they've made that they've made us aware of that. Um, so our goal currently is to um, stockpile money, basically, um, just to be sure that if you know for some reason we should have a year where the funding source drops drastically, we can carry through. Okay, um, and Mayor Slaughter, this might be a question more for you um, than Adam, but either one of you. Um, have, have you guys had any discussions or is there any plans to push forward on regionalizing this, this thing into an authority? Um, if, we're, if this thing's going to continue to grow, um, it seems to me that that probably would be the best route to go for all ratepayers in county, in the city, out of county. Um, had, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, you're good. Go ahead. I was going to say, we yeah, we've had we've initiated these conversations with PennDOT. PennDOT's been uh, heavily involved as Adam uh, mentioned earlier. Um, and so they're <clears throat> along with us reviewing 
all the routes, all the numbers, uh, and working with us, you know, on, on this, on the best path forward. So yeah, PennDOT's heavily involved in those conversations and we're having those uh, regularly. So yes, okay. absolutely. Is we have, we're, we're exploring that possibility and uh, in conjunction with PennDOT, um, looking to see what that, what that would look like for us and what that would look like for this region. Okay. Do you, have a, do you have any kind of timelines associated with that or still very exploratory? Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think there's a time frame right now. Uh, obviously, um, the numbers were skewed this year due to COVID. So, you know, for, <laughs> from our standpoint and from PennDOT's as they're, you know, they obviously have to approve uh, these types of things. So um, I think they wanted a little more, obviously, see what the numbers would look like um, once we quote unquote said earlier, return to normal. Um, and what a regionalized regionalization or additional fixed routes might look like. <clears throat> can I just Adam, jump in real quick? Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Okay, um, so just to jump on that, um, I've held conversations with uh, like Rich Farr, for example, from Rabbit Transit. Um, as soon as we get past the holidays here, he wants to get together. He has a, a 10 county system south of us. Um, he currently does paratransit into the five counties below. Um, he is anxious to work with us and help us navigate through those five counties below with his contacts. Um, I've talked to other transit agencies, their CEOs, um, directors, etc. cetera. Um, we're definitely um, expanding our horizons and working with all these other agencies to look at regionalization. And um, I mean, I don't want to speak for Mayor Slaughter, but I think here at RVT, our goal is to be do the same thing, become a 10 county authority or 10 county regionalization of some sort. And like I said, touch every other transit agency out there. At the same time, I don't, you know, um, just to piggyback a little bit, we want to make sure we don't count our, you know, ducks before they hatch. Right. Uh, so, we want to do uh, it exactly. Yeah, so that's why every step of the way here, we're keeping PennDOT involved, making sure we don't get the cart in front of the horse and we get two out in front of ourselves um, just to make sure everything is lined up, um, primarily to make sure it's lined up for the, the way PennDOT uh, wants to see it and that, you know, it's lined up for us as well. <clears throat> yeah, no, that, that's good. One, um, one last thing I know, um, Councilwoman uh, Katz has her hand up here. This is just a general observation. This isn't really in this budget section. It'll be a little bit later, but something that we really should figure out um, on our departmental earnings section, the indirect cost for the Williamsport Bureau of Transportation. We've got $75,000 um, in here of revenue that we're getting from RVT into the city budget. Um, I think, I feel very confident saying that city, city departments are spending a lot more time over at RVT supporting RVT. That number should probably be six figures at least um, between HR, finance, IT, um, even the mayor's office. Um, I, I know Mayor Slaughter, you're over there. You're, I know you're paying the general fund. Just an observation. That's something we should really look at over the next number of years, as long as that's, um, as long as the city proper is supporting RVT. The only question I have, Adam, didn't we start last year um, doing some exchanges with rabbit transit. Weren't there some short runs, you know, that we're using? I can remember seeing the, the, the vehicles up here. Um, rabbit transit does that themselves through their um, MA trips. Um, if an individual down in that area would have to come up to UPMC or a doctor up this way, um, they have all rights to bring that person up here. Um, we receive nothing from that. Okay, because I thought we were trying to get into an exchange program with them somehow last year, if I remember this at budget time. Um, yeah. Yes, uh, there was some conversation of, of that um, between the previous administration and Mr. Farr and um, things kind of fell through. Um, we are going to definitely hold that conversation again and see what we can do to all work together. I mean, because it would be uh, financially beneficial to us, I think, to make sure that we are using, utilizing as much as we possibly can with other transit systems, since we're all trying to regionalize ICE. Say that Absolutely. fast. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, can I just jump back to Councilman Yoder real quick, his last statement. Um, so 
Yes, I, I agree with everything you're saying. Um, we are tracking like streets and parks does different things for RVT. Um, we're tracking those hours as well as RVT hours for the city. Um, the HVAC, Jordan Fillman, um, this year has carried the load for the heating and air conditioning at City Hall, um, fire headquarters, Bowman Field, streets and parks. Um, so we have gone on the track of trying to track hours for all individuals that are crossing over and we're going to be working on billing, et cetera, for those items. Um, I mean, even including myself, I have to track my hours for streets and parks. Um, it, it's across the board on this end. I'm sure Mayor Slaughter is keeping track of his hours that he's done with RVT so we can figure this all out. Yeah, no, that, that's good. Um, I mean, I, I'm I'm pretty sure if I if I recall we we have to do that legally and what have you so that's I mean th that's good to know that that's happening, um, but especially I think with our city employees that are supporting RVT and not the other way around, um, yes. there's more revenue to be had there. I don't think we're only spending seventy five thousand dollars of our time in supporting RVT. I would be pretty highly inclined to think it's a lot more. Um, mm -hmm. No, no, I'm not disagreeing with that at all. I'm just, you know, just letting you guys be aware yeah. that it is happening on the streets and park side. Um, you know, yeah. um, speaking, speaking of tracking time, we never got a copy of the time study from August, July, August. Um, Joe? yeah, I don't know. Nicole's going to check on that. What we started doing the whole time study, we did it on our time slips instead of just doing sporadic snapshots with the time studies. When we dealt with the state and with the auditors, we changed our time slips. So now, for example, if I'm working on something that's not RBT related from eight o'clock in the morning till 10, I have to track it. Those two hours went to this. These two hours went to whatever other agency, whether it's city, RBT, whatever. Um, so we've been doing it on a per pay basis. Yeah. Now we were supposed to get that. that back in August. We never got it. I'm not sure I'm going to give it to you. We can summarize it. That's not a, that's not hard to do because we use it to, to invoice. Yep. We'll, we'll get you something. Well, I think the other thing that we're, uh, we're concerned about is not only are we uh, using, utilizing city employees with RVT, we don't want city hall. Once city hall is up and running again, we don't want City Hall to be short shifted at this point. And, uh, you know, eventually it's going to get back to normal where, you know, we're going to need uh, all hands on deck on City Hall and not spending so much time at RVT. I understand RVT is in the transitional period, but, you know, let's not forget that we do have City Hall to be concerned about and in that they're on the straight and narrow also. Any other uh, questions or comments? I clarify one thing, sure. not time study back, back, I think it was Adam said it, about uh, our federal monies, the 7.2 million. Mm -hmm. We have access to it, but it's not, we don't get all that money up front. We draw that money down as we need it. Mm -hmm. So we can't draw down the whole 7.2 million because when you draw it down, you have to spend it in a certain amount of days. Mm -hmm. So if we have at the end of the year, we would use our federal monies. If there's any kind of surplus, it would be our state monies that would go as deferred, not our federal. Okay. I just want to... Thanks for that clarification. Um, I just had one question on <clears throat> if you do become, uh, if we would uh, transition to an authority or RVT, um, there's also an issue about decoupling with the city as far as the pensions and, and all of that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, that's why uh, we're in regular contact with PennDOT because there's a lot of uh, variables um, that would have to be untangled. Yeah. Uh, if we, you know, if we were to move to an authority because it's been so, RBT has been so intertwined. Well, it isn't part right. of the city, obviously. Um, so to um, undo that, uh, yeah, so to speak, undo that um, and making an authority, um, we just have to make sure. That's one of the things I'm saying, you know, 
That's why we have to have all of our ducks in a row. Uh, right. Before yeah. We would do that, which is why PennDOT has been and will continue to be heavily involved uh, throughout this process. Right. So we need to, uh, and I think council would like to be um, updated on some of that. Those. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah obviously, there's no um, decisions. Yeah. Now, oh, now, sure. Yeah. But yeah. As, as we, as that gains traction, obviously, of course, council will be kept in the loop. Okay. Uh, other answers or questions, comments, anything? Um, Randy, can I ask one more thing? Yes, you sure can. Um, help me to understand. I, I mean, I, I, I understand the concept of PennDOT's involvement, but to what extent are we expecting to be intertwined with PennDOT moving forward and for how long? Um, that is to say, to what extent are we continuing to have autonomy as a transit department and to what extent are we looking to send out for kind of basic decision making, et cetera, within RBC right now? What was, I'm sorry, Liz, I missed the last piece of that, of what you. Uh, well, PennDOT Pen keeps coming up and, um, and they haven't really been involved with RBC previously. I'm asking to what extent are we continuing an affiliation with PennDOT for, I mean, I, I know, I, I understand that RBT is constantly affiliated with PennDOT. I'm not, I, I understand the right. connection there. Right. I understand right. That, that, that the state is, is a major source of our funding, I, yada, yada, yada. Um, yeah. But yeah. This, it, it seems as though PennDOT is currently kind of acting in like an oversight slash consulting role within RBT um, that it hasn't in the past. Mm -hmm. How long do we anticipate that continuing and to what extent is RBT, um, is PennDOT calling the shots at RBT versus the city? Uh, as far as how long their involvement will be, it's, you know, that's, it's hard to tell. Um, you know, obviously right now with Clinton County, uh, we, we've touched, we've been in contact with them about that. Um, it's, it's same thing as, as far as tying into other transit agencies, um, and the possibility of transitioning to an authority, um, untangling, as I just mentioned, uh, some of what, um, the finances and the, uh, the uh, projects within the city that RBT has been a part of and just making sure all the grants, um, you know, if we transition to authority that the city's not on the hook for any of, you know, any of the grants that they would need to pay back or anything along those lines. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know how long PennDOT would need to be involved other than just to make sure that it's, you know, transitioned correctly and, you know, everything is aligned to their, uh, the way they want to see it. So, um, you know, I don't know. I mean, Adam Winder could jump in, but, you know, my discussions with PennDOT was it's more so they just want to make sure um, that it's correct from the beginning and we're not going to them after the fact saying, oh, we did this. Um, is this OK? More that, hey, we, we're looking at an authority. They know that. And what do those steps look like um, where we stand currently and then moving forward? The, the biggest thing is. No, but please. please but as far as them, as far as them calling the shots, they're not, they're not calling the shots on, you know, as far as a day to day, unless we have some type of question for them, um, or something that we need to run by them. If Mayor, I, are, are they charging us for this? No, no, no. Um, if I can give a prime example, and this will be a short one. Um, so previously, all the funds from RVT ended up going into essentially one pot with the city money, and that was absolutely not allowed. PennDOT came along and said this should have never been happening. It's not the way it's supposed to be done. Your federal money has to be in one account, your state money in another account, and your local match in a third account. You can't have everything compiled together. There's different things that over the years, whether it changed or whatever, that for whatever reason did not change like it was supposed to. So we're just you, you know, relying on PennDOT to make sure that everybody here is in line with what we're supposed to be doing. We're doing all the proper reporting. We're doing all the proper documentation. We know that we're using everything the correct way, the way we should be, so the city does not get in any trouble or RBT, myself, or any employees here. Um, it's also being that they are the ones that distribute most of the money to us. Um, it's a lot like the liquid fuels. I mean, technically, PennDOT has more control of the liquid fuels than city council does. 
because if we, if you guys say that, yes, we can use that money for this and I go spend it, PennDOT can come back to the city and say, nope, you weren't allowed to spend it that way. The city now has to give that money back to us. And I think right. those counts were undone, what, Adam, was it September, I believe, where we fixed yes. that? It was September. Um, we found out that it was being done incorrectly, and within about a week, we had it fixed. Yeah, that again, that came from PennDOT. So there's certain pieces that PennDOT's initiating um, that they have to be involved in, and then there's other uh, times where we re we've reached out to them just to make sure it was correct. So that was one of the issues where they reached out to us and said, your funds are all commingled. Um, you need to get these separate accounts, which we did. So that's just, a, yeah. Adam. Yeah. Um, just to kind of, I guess, maybe link some of the conversation together here that just popped into my mind. I think what would be good, um, at least for me, is some kind of a just synopsis of what what's what's PennDOT been um, coaching the city on over over the year? What are some of the things that have been corrected? Why have they been corrected? Um, I, I think that would be very valuable for my learning. And, and, um, and what is the budgetary impact, Adam? I think. That's and, and what is the budgetary impact on that? Absolutely. Um, the budgetary impact from what? I'm sorry. Well, from if there's been, it sounds like there's some, some stuff that has been adjusted based on some learnings that PennDOT has offered us. Um, if we've done anything wrong in the past, if there's going to be a budgetary impact because of that, we need to know now for sure. Um, and, and I, I mean, in my opinion, that's, that those are stuff that probably should have been included in the budget. Well, um, there's some of those budgetary impacts may not be known uh, at the moment, but they may be known in the future. So yeah, understood, but we could at least know that they're potentially out there. Um, the budget was two pages. But that's the, that's, that's 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 the challenge. Um, and and it very well, Adam, to your point, yeah. it could very well be in the document that was sent. Um, but the more information, I think, especially with transit, the better. Right. Um, there's so many there's so many things that uh, intricacies that go involved with that i think the more information that we know the better um right and if i could just jump in real quick um so what i spoke to mr allison about is this budget is no longer after this going to be in the city budget um this budget should be completely adopted as an ordinance just like the cdbg mm -hmm. budget um and it should be done in April when it's being submitted to the state so council can approve it then, then the state approves it, then it's our operating budget. Um, because it is very complicated to intermingle six months of what we're gonna expect to spend into a city budget and six months of next year's budget that we don't really know what our allocation is gonna be. Um, so in April, you're gonna see a whole new budget. So at that point, it's not even really going to exist in the city budget. Um, we were trying to do that prior to the city budget, but due to everything else, it just couldn't happen. And I apologize. And as soon as the cuss, the we do know the any budgetary impact, council will know that immediately. As soon as we we're not aware at this point of any budgetary impacts. However, if, if some come down the road, you know you'll know as soon as I know. You all know. Whether it's an email, a phone call, whatever, I will forward it right along. Okay. Uh, can I return briefly to the question of an authority? Yes. Um, is So it seems as though our kind of um, greater involvement with PennDOT is partly related to the idea that we want to form an authority here in the future, potentially. Yes. That's, yeah, that's part of it, yeah. It's the cleanest way to be. Okay. Um, then when we talk about an authority, we've talked about a couple of different things in the past. We've talked about separating out drivers, um, mechanics, et cetera, everything under an authority. We've also talked about the idea of a management authority that manages, among other things, um, drivers who are still employed by the city and mechanics who are still employed by the city. Um, do we have a direction that we're looking at at this point there? Are both of those possibilities still under consideration? The one would involve substantially less disentangling of the city's pension plan um, and healthcare. 
Uh, correct. I, I think we're leaning more, to, more towards an operating authority okay. versus the management authority. Um, and okay. with the operating authority, that would, it would untangle things and it would um, make it so that the mayor and council would be the ones appointing the board to oversee the authority. Got it. But all of the all of the drivers um, and mechanics would leave the city's health care and pension plan. They would be removed from the city's health care and pension plan, um, so that there would be the city would have a significant savings on both sides of that. Uh, why Why would that be the case? Um, I would have to get you more explanation, but that's what I'm being told by the auditors as well as the attorney, Jill Nagy. Okay. I, I, yeah, I'd, I'd like to understand because it seems to me like if we if we remove a hundred some people from our um, maybe not so much from our pension plan but from our health care plan, um, it has the potential to cost us substantially more to provide um, health insurance. Not necessarily because you're still in the health care pool, which is okay. um, multiple municipalities come together to get that lower rate. Okay. Um, all right. Well, we'll yeah. We I'm I would be interested to hear more about that at some point, Adam. If you have any further. Um, I, I do have um, Jill Nagy as well as RKL working on what it would look like and what our roadmap would be. And at that, you know, so that when we do get to that point, we're not trying to do it all then. We kind of have a plan as we go. Um, I'll be more than happy to share that with everybody once I get it. Okay. Uh, sound, sounds good. Um, all right. Thanks. And thanks, Randy and everybody. Thank you. Any other questions before we leave this subject? Okay. Uh, thank you, Nicole, for being here tonight to help us on and uh, lots of good discussion tonight. We'll move on to uh, income estimates. That would be Mr. Pavlock. Good evening. Um, Going into the income estimate for the 2021 budget, um, under taxes, uh, real estate current, uh, $15,605,929. Uh, that represents a millage of 17.97 uh, and a 92% collection rate based on the assessment information sent over by the county, which can be found in your miscellaneous tab. Um, real estate prior, 900,000. Wage tax, 2,150,000. Uh, local services tax, 1,050,000. Mechanical devices, 31,500. Uh, business privilege and mercantile tax, you'll see a reduction in this at 1,746,000. Um, and coming up with our estimate or our proposed budget number, um, being that we were shut down for approximately three months or one quarter of the year, uh, due to the pandemic, we decided to um, budget at 75% of the collections in 2020. Um, under real estate transfer tax, uh, 300,000. Um, interest and penalties, 285,000. Uh, discounts allowed, 270,000. Um, and tax and revenue uh, uh, tr tram proceeds, uh, $2,000,000 dollars for total taxes of 23,798,000. 429. Uh, for license and permits, uh, the TV cable franchise fee, 220,000. Um, other license and permits, 95,000. Building permits, 250,000. Uh, and street excavation permits of 100,000 for total licenses and permits of 665,000. Um, under fines and forfeits, traffic fine states, 15,000. Traffic fines and restitutions, 44,000. Traffic fines local, 1,500. And magistrate fees, 85,000 for total fines and forfeits of $145,500. Um, do you want me to continue on or? Um, are there questions from anyone on page eight? I do. Uh, I have, okay. Okay, Bonnie, you're, you're first. Um, with the TV cable franchise, um, did we not discuss sometime during this year that um, the franchises we have to 
renegotiate our contract? That is correct. Okay, I, 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 I've not been involved in that process. Um, I budgeted it consistent with the prior years, assuming that we'd at least stay where we're at today. Um, I'll defer to other members of the administration if they have. I can jump don't. in. It's Chris. Um, we are in the process of renegotiating that. Um, we're working with Loyal Sock Township in that um, there have been a number of changes um, based on an order from the FCC that limits what uh, free services we can ask for from Comcast. Um, so it's it's really a very boilerplate franchise agreement at this point. Um, and, and that fee is um, what we collect is based on what we set the rate at that they charge their rate payers. So right now we are at 3%. Legally, we're allowed to go up to 5% and that's something that we certainly can consider, but that would be up to city council. Well, at this stage of the game, I think 5% would increase the income. The other thing is our, our TV equipment is so old, would it be possible to renegotiate getting newer equipment with them that they would supply the equipment? For um, the, you mean for like the PEG channel? Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, that we will be asking for a grant as part of the process. Because at this stage of the game, we don't know how long we're going to be using YouTube. Uh, if we do go back to live and wherever we go, uh, we still could utilize the, the TV equipment. A absolutely. And, and yes, the initial agreement they sent did not have the, the PEG grant in it. And I asked them to add that back into it. Thank you, Chris, because I think that's vitally important because I think you of all people know how outdated our equipment is. A absolutely. Yep. It Thank you. Sure. Mr. Yoder. Uh, yeah, to piggyback off of that, when do we expect to have that um, renegotiated, resolved, and, and come before council? Um, I would say in January or early February. Okay. And can I ask a quick question related to that ask as well, Chris? It. Yep, go ahead, Liz. Did, Chris, did you say that we can increase um, the amount that currently we're at 3% and we can increase the charge up to 5%? We can do that, but just remember that you're, uh, you're, you're basically taxing the, right. the, the subscribers the at that point. It's not, Comcast is not paying us that 3%. It's passed directly on to the subscriber as the franchise fee at 3%. And if it increased to 4%, it'd be passed on directly, just like a sales tax would be passed on to them. Right, understood. But, uh, but likewise, the potential then revenue increase there would be something in the neighborhood of 150,000? 146,666. Yes. Is that accurate, Chris, or is there some? No, that, in the that, would, that would be accurate, yep. Based on today's collections. Yes. Okay. And that's merely something that we request from Comcast. That's not. Yeah, that's actually something that we can we can do it at any point outside of the franchise negotiations. Uh, I believe we have to give them 90 days notice. Um, we wouldn't to do that immediately then uh, to just, you know, negotiate the contract? Negotiate the contract or increase the franchise? Fee? Incre increase the the. the from 3% to say four or 5%. Uh, certainly, I think we probably just need a, a resolution of council and um, to request that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, just to chime in on that, that might be something we wanna consider. I mean, I don't, I don't like, I don't, there's a lot about the revenue side and the tax increase specifically that I don't like a lot. Um, and I'm sure a number of us don't, but I think if, and I don't even like maybe even bumping that up, but if, if somebody's got to choose between keeping their home or keeping their TV, I think that's a pretty easy decision. So, right. I think it's a lot more justifiable. Um, I will speculate in that over the next few years, even if we do increase that amount, I suspect that what we're receiving is going to decrease. Um, that, that, 
franchise fee is only paid on um, it's a list of 25 or 26 items, but all of those items basically relate to basic TV, cable, mm. equipment, those types of things. There is, um, we cannot collect any franchise fee on internet or phone service that they, they carry on their same cable system. Um, I mean, that, and that's something that's been talked about numerous times, both at the state and federal level. Um, and, and that's basically set by the FCC and has been for years. Mm -hmm. Chris, would we be able to ask how many uh, uh, people are using Comcast? Because isn't the, the money that uh, is used, what we're getting is based on the usage. And, would we, and to know how many people are actually using Comcast. I mean, there's, you know, so many people use direct, they use dish, whatever. Right. Um, we, we, we absolutely can ask for it. Yep. And I can, I can request those numbers from them. I would like to see those numbers to see where we stand. Any other questions? Um, KJ, Liz? Uh, yeah, I just had a couple of small questions about different differences in, in revenue. Um, so the increase in interest and penalties, what, what's that related to? Um, this year it was down because we extended the, so the compared to 2020, it's, it's up $40,000. That increase is related to um, the extended uh, collection dates. So face and, right. and discount were extended out. So it gave more people, people more time um, to collect the funds to, to pay them within the face or discount period. Got it. Um, so we think that our interest and penalties will be up over. It makes sense. I'm just trying, I, addition, I guess I'm just trying to make sure that we're not figuring on income that we're not going to. And in, in um, addition, interest and penalties will be on a higher tax rate for 2021 at this point. So um, uh, that's accurate. True. Um, and then the building permits. Uh, down 100,000 from our estimate last year, but up 75,000 from what we actually took in last year. Is there a reason to think that we're going to see more building than this year? Next I, year, it's just related to no stoppage of work? Uh, something similar to the, the mercantile and business privilege. I mean, we, we had a shutdown for a period of time where it was only essential construction or, or, or things of that nature. So um, I believe back in the day, we've always set the, the standard for a normal year or a, a, a base year. Um, at 250, so I, I, I planned on that in 2021, our standard base year without any major projects going on. So, you know, having a, some, a year similar today and then another, you know, hopeful, a, a bigger construction project go through could, could move that. Okay, um, thanks. That was everything I had, Randy. Thank you. Thank you, Liz and everybody. Uh, yes. Sorry, Randy, I have one, one quick. Yeah, go ahead, yep. Uh, Joe, the, uh, the mechanical devices line item, um, at $100 a device, that means we have about 315 devices we're taxing, for lack of a better term. And, and emissions, I believe, that is included in that, that collection. It's $100 for any uh, establishment that charges an emission, but that admission is only once it charged once a year, not per emission. Um, that number has gone up a little bit over the past number of years, uh, I think in relation to the, um, the game machines, the skill machines, uh, but that they're collected by the treasurer's office. And I think I see Nick on here, so he might have some additional information. Uh, yeah, I guess I was, I was just curious what the breakdown was of that. $31,500. How, how much of that is actual machines? How much is it is, like you said, people charging admission to, to something? Do we have numbers on that? We do. Some of that information we have to be careful as tax information could be confidential. Joe's right that most of our increase we've seen, you know, that budget item used to be 15000 or or less just a few years ago. Um, we had a new arcade come to town, which has a lot of machines. Um, a lot of skilled machines influxed into the area. So that, that's a lot of the increase. I can give you a pretty general breakdown um, for city purposes, but we can't really share that widely amongst oh, the public. Sure. 
Yeah, I get it. I'm just curious. And, and we don't track it extremely carefully. We can tell sort of by the business and location what they are, but because it's a hundred dollars, no matter what it is, we don't make them identify what that machine is when they, when they apply for the permit. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else, John? Nope, I'm good. Okay. All right, I think we can go to page nine. Okay, on page nine under interest, um, general interest is proposed at 30,000. Uh, tax investment income is 1,700 for total interest of $31,700. Um, under departmental earnings, indirect cost from uh, Williamsport Bureau of Transportation, $75,000. Um, recreation program income, $20,000. Uh, pool admissions, $30,000. Pool concessions, $1,000. Uh, rescue operation fees, uh, $10,000. Towing fees, $16,000. Rental inspections, $40,000. Special events, $30,000. Uh, miscellaneous workers comp, 10,000. Miscellaneous codes, 1,000. Miscellaneous controller, 100. Miscellaneous finance and other, 95,000. Uh, miscellaneous fire, 5,000. Miscellaneous police, 25,000. Miscellaneous streets and parks, 12,000. Miscellaneous treasure, 9,000. Um, surplus property sales, 4,000. Um, Benecon health insurance surplus, 350,000, um, and health insurance employee contributions of 76,000 uh, for a total of $809,100. Uh, question, counsel. Mr. Yoder. Um, yeah, a couple questions on a couple line items. Um, just start from the top. So interest received, um, I was talking with um, Treasurer Grimes here uh, earlier earlier in the year, um, and he had referenced about um, potential increased revenue if we would ever RFP banking services. Um, is that something, I know that he brought that forward. I don't remember when, um, my apologies, Nick. But uh, if that's, is that something that we've looked at recently? If not, um, I'd, I'd encourage us to take a look at that because there seems to be a potential revenue stream that we are not taking advantage of there. I can talk about that if you'd like. I, I don't know that we've ever RFP'd it. Um, it it's, it's very complex, so there's a lot of pieces to it. Um, certainly when we had cash on hand and interest rates were climbing, 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 there was a lot of opportunity and a lot of people that wanted business. Um, but as we look at that, which, which could even be a greater positive impact for the city, you know, to the right vendor, but we have to consider our, our debt obligations and, you know, the other services we get from the banking institution. Um, right now, a lot of our banking is done through M&T Bank and they don't just handle the deposits. They handle a lot of other things and provide a lot of other services. So um, it, it'd be a hard change if we, if we moved things. Um, because all of our checks have to be changed, you know, all of our automatic withdrawals, all of our ACHs we receive, all of those things need to be changed. But certainly, especially when interest rates are higher, um, there's opportunity to move money around and, and to make more money. Um, and in fact, there's even there's companies that specifically do that for you that go out and take bids for cash on hand, whether it's short term, you know, a six month CD or it's, you know, a savings account, a money market, whatever it is. Um, I think like Holman County uses a company called three plus one, and they've seen a few hundred thousand dollars of additional revenue by using that company to do that. Yeah. So, um, I, I know that, um, I know that the administration, um, for a number of contracts, which I agree with generally, um, has, has RFP a lot of stuff. Um, I think when we're there, when this is up for renewal, um, I, I would, I think it's something we need to heavily look at for sure. I mean, obviously, like Nick had said, the, the interest rate environment, the economic environment plays into that, but, um, this is the kind of stuff that we could potentially get some value out of RFPing. We should definitely look at doing it. Um, the indirect cost, uh, Bureau of Transportation, I mentioned this earlier under RBT's budget. 
Um, it seems to me, at least this year, we spent a lot more time than $75,000. I mean, um, by my math, if you take all of the um, budgets we have, community economic development, RVT, and then the general fund, RVT accounts for about 32% of it um, with just core offices, finance, HR, mayor's office, um, you know, I mean, if, if, if they're spending theoretically 32% of their time there based on 32% of the, um, the um, personnel budget, that should be about 400 some thousand dollars. So, um, and, and that's why I asked again about the time study. That's why that time study is extremely important. I think we need to know who's spending what time where so that we can accurately figure this out as well as the ripple effects of any time that we're relying on RVT to the general fund budget. So I think getting that time study um, sooner than later, especially this year, in tw um, I mean, in 2020, if not maybe next week before the second reading of this would be very, very beneficial. Um, that's something that we should definitely explore in my mind. Um, Bowman Field naming rights. So I know I saw the announcement from the Crosscutters this year um, my guess is that we're probably haven't started it or aren't necessarily there yet, but, uh, I did want to ask the mayor, where, where do we actually stand with that agreement? Um, what are, what are our plans there? Um, since the MLB is officially going to be affiliated with the crosscutters. Yep. Since that word just came out today. So that's what we were waiting on. Uh, Perfect. so we've had a number of people that are interested, but obviously they weren't interested if there was not going to be a team. So yep. Since that just came out today, we are ready to um, get that ball rolling. So yeah, they were the ones that were interested. It said that you know we we don't want to make a monetary commitment until we know if there's going to be baseball in 2021 and beyond. So now that we know there will be baseball, we can start doing some negotiations. Gotcha. Do you have any? Um, I I know the announcement just came out today, um, but do you have any kind of timeline on negotiations when they're going to happen? When we can have them wrapped up. Um, did you get, were you ever able to potentially gauge any interest of monetary value if there would be an MLB affiliation? Yeah, there's a lot of people that are interested. Uh, a lot of, I would say a lot, but there's a number of organizations that are interested. They didn't commit to a monetary um, amount when I was talking to them, but I would hope that this would be wrapped up. Shouldn't take too long. Um, so, you know, we'll reach out to them I would think early 2021, it should be uh, wrapped up in a front of council uh, for consideration. Cool. I, I, I'm not, I'm not fully aware of um, the naming rights market for stadiums. Um, probably like most of us aren't, but uh, given that MLB's there, given the um, major league classic that's there, that $35,000 seems like something that might be a bargain for, for somebody. Um, I would think, but I mean, again, we, we got to see what, where the market's at and what have you for that. But um, I'm hopeful that that might be something that increases. Not, not to jump in on that, but there is, there is some benefit to the organization that, that gets the naming rights. Um, they do introduce the field. Uh, however, any signage that they have that would be visible through the camera views or whatever is typically covered up with the, the little league. Uh, major league classic logo so we have to make sure that people are aware of that and, and take that into their their cost considerations when they're putting that out there yeah it's only available for the uh cross cutters so well, every any... time every time i've watched on espn the major league baseball classic it says williamsport pa M or whatever name ball field so it's on tv it's... <laughs> Correct. And, and that's why i'm saying that they're there they do introduce the field as um however um, any of the signage that is on the field is typically covered up and, and replaced with um, other logos. They so take all the advertising the, down, don't they? I'm they sorry. cover it up. They cover. They take it up. all the advertising away. It, it, yeah, they yeah, cover right. it up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, Mayor, wasn't it forty thousand that was uh, for the naming rights? Uh, Joe, I think it started yeah. at thirty and went up to thirty-five. Yeah, I was going to say I think thirty-five was the highest it got to. I think it was 35 for a two year period. If I okay. if I recall it correctly, I'd have to pull the agreement to be uh, sure of that. I don't know, 40,000 just seemed to be in my mind, but uh, I'm happy that we are gonna have something with it. At least it's 40,000 in our coffers at this point. 
I do have, are, are you finished, Adam? Mm -hmm. I do have a question to ask. Um, we have here under codes uh, with earnings uh, and with the codes earnings, those are uh, permits for signs outside, signage on top of, for buildings and things like that. If I'm looking at what that is, is that under right? The, under the miscellaneous codes? Ms. Yes. Uh -huh. No, that is actually mainly, um, there, there's some miscellaneous fees that they charged that are uh, infrequent in nature, but the majority of that comes from um, the, the payment on liens. Um, you know, in the codes department, they have their clean and seal line item. Mm -hmm. um, that's with individuals going out and um, uh, mowing grass and doing improvements. So anytime that work is done, the cost of the uh, vendor that we send out to do that work is we apply for liens on that property. So it's typically repayments of liens, outstanding liens. For well, how about with the controller? What is that for? I know it's a, a minimal amount, but it's just uh, curiosity. That, that one is the um, the non-sufficient fund fee for checks that are um, that, that come back from the banks. So so if I wrote a check to the city and it, 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 it bounced, um, that is the fee that we have to pay uh, or that, that I would have to pay um, to the city for that that um, bounce check. Okay. Oh, just curious, curiosity. Yeah, okay. small number, but it, 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 you know, we're on track for that 250. I think it might be a little bit over, but again, a little on 250 is not much. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. Joe, the, uh, the Benetton surplus, is that an estimate based on what you sent our experiences or is that a placeholder right now. Throughout the year, Benefcon will give us updates um, as to what they uh, see the surplus at. I believe I pulled the last update for that and um, attributed the uh, general fund portion. Um, typically, the general fund portion based on payments made accounts for 75% of the expected return from, sur from the surplus. Okay. Thank you. Other questions or comments. Okay. Hearing none, uh, page 10. Okay, under grants state, uh, the beverage license tax, 16,000, the public utility tax, 18,000, uh, and the pension contribution, 1,250,000 for total state grants of $1,284,000. Uh, for grants other, uh, payments in lieu of taxes, $355,000. Um, administration for the tax collection office, $31,500. Uh, SRO grant, local match uh, from the Williamsport School District, $57,700. Uh, and the county liquid fuels allocation of $24,043 for total other grants of 468,243. Um, and then under other contributions, um, there was the first line there, the CARES Federal uh, Act, Gretel, excuse me, the CARES Act Federal Grant Funds. Um, I, I sent out a message to everyone this morning that was removing that um, and the corresponding expense um, in the police department. Um, and then under release assigned fund balance streets, uh, 175,000 uh, for a total general fund uh, income budget of 27,376,972. Question, Council. Mrs. Katz. Uh, two things. Please explain the beverage license tax. I always forget to ask what that is. Um, uh, isn't that the fee uh, that goes to uh, retail liquor and malt beverage license fees? Okay. So businesses that sell liquor or malt beverages in the city, uh, there's a, I, I'm assuming that that's a PLCB fee. Yeah, I think that's our portion of the PLCB fees collected for the, for the institutions in the city. Then that seems awfully low. I I don't know how often I'd have to do some research on it, um, pull up some prior payments, but that amount is pretty consistent from year to year. I don't know if it's a a multi-year license. I'd I'd have to look to see how they they do that. 
we, we see it at every budget and I was just curious. The other thing in lieu of taxes, are we still not negotiating uh, one entity? We are, and that has the um, amount, I believe, that was uh, previously submitted. So um, I don't know where the current negotiations stand, but- um, that, should, that should be in front of council, most likely at the next council meeting. Okay. And the county liquid fuels allocation, um, 24,000 seems awfully low for that also. Um, I don't know if Adam's still around. I think he's up next. Uh, that has been a standard amount since I've been in here. Um, I don't know if that has to do with the fact that we receive a, a direct entitlement from liquid fuels. I, 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 I'm not exactly sure the basis uh, behind the amount. We can definitely look into it. And yeah, it's just a direct amount, Joe. So it's the same amount every year, Adam? It has been for the last few years. Um, whether it'll decrease or not due to COVID, I'm not 100% sure, but it's averaged that same amount for the last four years I've been in it, it's, it's been longer than that. And I think, it, I, I think it's trying to um, divvy up what the county receives and also you know any projects that they may have that are eligible, um, trying to, to spread it across the county. Okay, thank you. Um, the, the in lieu of taxes, um, I, we've had this conversation amongst ourselves before and I recently had one with uh, Councilman uh, Polizzi um, who brought this up as well. Um, I think uh, we need to have a concerted effort um, to approach entities um, to give something. Uh, we, we do have uh, the heaviest burden of, of nonprofits because we're the county seat and, and we are the biggest city in the county. And we appreciate all the services that, that, that they offer. There's, there's no doubt about that. At the same time, um, we provide uh, a lot of services as well that for all these organizations that, that the citizens of Williamsport have to pay for. And um, it, it just seems like that there might be more room there for um, people at least to be made aware of what, what, what is being done by some and to promote that, that sense of um, participating in that effort, um, we're not out to break the bank or hurt anybody, anybody's um, organization or anything like that. But um, I think it's it's time for us to publicize it more and and at least ask who can help. Um, just a thought. Okay. Um, any more questions on that page? Mr. Yoder. Um, yeah, related to the CARES Act federal funds for the radios. I know that was a grant, um, you know, for the police radios that were in the budget, which I don't think are in anymore. Um, not being super familiar with what else CARES Act money could be used for. Um, could you educate me at least a little bit, Mayor Slaughter, on what other CARES Act funding may be out there? What else have we potentially gone after? Um, is there anything else out there that we could potentially secure? Probably won't help us this year, but could help us in the future. Joe, did you have what? You I just, I, just to explain oh, yeah, that, this one, this was uh, an application that was put into the county. Mm -hmm. um, there was we a- there was We don't know where we- Go ahead. I'm sorry, Joe. There was miscommunication when um, the police department submitted their budget. I had heard previous conversations about this county money, and I put this in as an offset to it. Um, they were putting it in as a discussion item to, to okay. have in case we didn't get the county uh, CARES funding. Um, so they, I, I think that Chief Hagan and Chief Killian are, are working to try to, to secure county funds for this or for other yeah. projects and, and use yeah. whatever they can. 
And so, and we don't know yet where that stands. So that's still in limbo, um, which is one of the reasons we took that out of the budget for now, because we didn't want to make it appear as though we received it because we have not received that yet. Um, the radios are contingent on, if not the CARES uh, money, then some type of funding stream. Obviously we're not going to do um, $500,000 out of the general fund, clearly. Yeah. Um, and so as far as other uh, CARES funding, we have, I've advocated and I've signed on the letters advocating for um, direct funding to municipalities because across the country we're all in the same boat. Clearly we don't know um, if there's going to be another um, you know, round of funding or uh, relief. Uh, hopefully over the next couple of weeks here, we might know that. Um, but I've definitely, uh, I've spoken to Senator Toomey directly, Senator Casey directly. Um, and I've signed on other, other uh, letters sent to congressional leaders asking for direct funding. So hopefully we do get some additional funding that clearly would help us uh, if we do, um, but we don't know where that stands. Um, and so we'll have to see uh, over the next few weeks here if Congress does act on another round or if they don't, and if they don't, uh, you know, then we'll have to see, you know, once the dust settles where we are, a lot of these, you know, as Joe Pavlock alluded to earlier is, uh, you know, we're trying to, you know, not knowing exactly what 2021 is going to look like, you know, some of these numbers. So additional funding would help clearly. Um, I've advocated, you know, extens extensively for that. Which, um, which one of our consultants has been advocating for it? We have two under contract, so. For the uh, CARES Act money, money, grant money, COVID money, any of it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've we've all been on that, but I've been I've been directly uh, involved in that, um, and uh, you know, so I've reached out to the federal legislation, um, state legislation, and so we'll see or legislate legislature. Um, so, so uh, now I've been in Delta has been I've been working with Delta. Uh, as well. And actually, uh, Penn Strategies was involved with Chief Hagen. And, and uh, as you all, I think you're aware of that, we're working on some of the uh, possible money. Okay. Thank you. Um, so they've all, we've all been involved, actually, really. <laughs> gotcha. So do you have, um, you don't have any kind of list of anything that might be out there as far as specific funding streams, grants, what have you? It's, it's really just been high level, it sounds like? As far as any kind of stimulus money that's been floating around there. There's been a lot out there. So it seems like other municipalities are getting it. Uh, I don't know what you're referencing specifically, but uh, we've been you know, going after what we can go after. Did we get anything at all from CARES? Yeah, we had that uh, the CDBG. Well, RVT received the seven million, and the CDBG we got uh, nine, I believe, somewhere in that vicinity. Uh, Skip, Mimi, do you nine, are you uh, on there? Let me let me be clear. Nine. Uh, it was like nine hundred thousand. Not that. The, the, the CARES money, I believe, for the for CDBG that the city received as an entitlement city, I think was uh, around 600 or, uh, in the six. Then we get an additional first group, and then there was an additional 200 yeah. something. Yeah. Uh, so it was around eight or nine. Yeah. So we yes. really didn't get that much at all to help with the city. Um, well, right, financing. which is why all the municipalities are asking for uh, direct funding. You know, we need, we need, I mean, we all need it. Um, and Williamsport is in, in as bad of shape as some other municipalities, uh, but we're all in need of direct funding across the whole country, which is why you see everyone advocating for that. Any other questions? Okay, I think that ends the uh, income estimate portion. Thank you, Mr. Pavlov. So we'll move to general government, Mayor Slaughter. 
Sure. So <clears throat> mayor's office, um, salaries 2020, 108,322, 2021, 109,783, FICA 2020-8300, 2021-8300, 2021-8300, 2021-8300, 2021-8300, 2021-8300, 2021-8300, 2021-8300, 2021-8300, 2021-8300, 2021-8300, 2021-8300, 2021-8300, 2021-8300
um, justified that transfer at this point. Um, and they were currently evaluating the uh, consultant proposals that have been received um, mm -hmm. and, and should be looking forward to bringing that uh, probably in January. Okay, excellent. Um, that's everything. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Mr. Yoder? Um, yeah, I just had a couple questions on um, the communications line item. What is that? No, mobile that's what. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Right. Mobile devices. Yeah, cell phones. Yeah. Okay, so it's. Um, so you have a uh, city provided cell phone, um, I'm assuming. Okay. Uh, dues and subscriptions, what's that for? That was just, uh, if we have any magazines or any type of, uh, that we want to subscribe to, you can, as far as I'm concerned, zero that out. I don't have, there's nothing that okay. uh, I'm subscribed to. So, okay. um, yeah, and, and I mean, I'm just I generally think, thinking, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say there were some magazines that I received with Joe or that the mayor's office receives, but I don't think. I have not uh, renewed any of those. So Joe, I don't think there's anything there that we're still, uh, I think all the previous ones that were coming in are- Let me let me confirm on that one. Um, okay. I think that previously we're trying to be more clear with, with the line items that are in the mayor's office budget. Yeah. Um, and were, I think that that could be something with uh, the chamber. So let me yeah, confirm was, that. that. I believe that that's what that fee is, but I'd have to, it was, previously that was in, um, the supplies light and line item right. on the next right. page. So uh, yeah. there, there were some things coming in, you know, magazines and things that I was getting, or that, let me rephrase that, the mayor's office was getting uh, that I'm not interested in. Uh, and if the chamber uh, fee does have to come out of that, then, you know, that would, that would, I would assume be appropriate for the mayor's office for our yearly chamber uh, dues. Membership here. <clears throat> yeah. No, I, if, ahead, if, if, if the chamber would be, if the chamber dues would be more appropriate somewhere else, that's fine. I mean, and zero that out. I mean, I don't, I don't plan on subscribing to anything. Uh, we'll, we'll have an answer for you on Wednesday night. I can get that for you. Um, I just want to check and see. I don't know whether I moved it um, down into to my uh, dues and subscriptions, which uh, also includes the Pennsylvania Municipal <laughs> League uh, annual dues. Uh, but I'll, I'll have an answer to that on Wednesday. Okay. Um, no, I mean, just, I mean, I mean, this is the, this is the first part of the general fund budget from an expenditure standpoint that we, that we're discussing here. Um, I know there's been a lot of communication from council's perspective, as far as, you know, we've got a $1.9 million <laughs> property tax increase in, in, in the mayor's proposed budget. Um, and, I, and I think that's something there's substantial interest in, um, in, in minimizing. To do that, we've got we've to cut stuff out of the budget. Um, so, I mean, just going through this, you know, we can sit here and go through this line item by line item and make a case of, you know, moving stuff around or cutting stuff. Um, it seems to me those are two areas that uh, could potentially go away um, in a situation where we're trying to minimize a tax increase um the other two that i had at least um noted um to kind of start off that effort is um the spca and the lycoming county historical society these are two great organizations that provide a great service to our community um they're tax exempt organizations um and and if you look at the spca specifically they relieve a government burden so they don't pay taxes, they don't pay property taxes, business privilege, sales property, sales taxes, any of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it'd be great to continue to, I think this is a grant um, that's been in there year over year from the mayor's office. Um, I don't think it's tied to CD um, community development funding. I think that's a separate um, item, um, at least in the community development budget, it appears to be. Um, this is something in my mind, unfortunately, that I think we look at getting rid of to minimize the tax burden. Um, I'm not saying we get rid of it 100% every year moving forward, but, you know, in a tough year like this, um, I think that's potentially something. Um, same with the historical society, same kind of deal. Um, every little bit helps. And something to, um, for all of us to consider, including you, Mayor Slaughter, um, you know, there's, there's, no, there's nothing in the, in the contingency line item 
Um, and I know we didn't really spend anything this year. That, that's a, that's fortunate. Um, but it's there for a reason. It's if, if we're going to, if we are going to shift money around, we may want to, or you may want to consider having a little bit in there so we can have a net decrease out of your office, but have a little bit of a contingency built in because we just don't know what could potentially happen. As you can see, there's a huge net decrease as of now, but um, yeah, the, the others that you mentioned, that's, you know, uh, yeah. Just over here, so just yeah, we're, we're down what, I don't know, 30, 100, I don't know. Quick, anyway. Just a quick update on the, the, the contingency line item. Uh, typically, that's been an item that if there was a contingency put in by the administration, it's been moved up to the mayor's, or I'm sorry, to, to council's contingency line item. Uh, there is currently a contingency line item in uh, city council's budget has been, has, has been historically done. Um, so again, the, the 20,000 that was in contingency in 2020 uh, was something new in 2020 or something that stuck in 2020, but hadn't stuck in prior years. So just from a historical perspective, it's not something that's always been in there. And I think that the intent on that was um, the public safety department's um, desire to get more officers out there um, was to set money aside so the mayor could evaluate it over the, the, the entire first half of the year and have some funds to move in in case that was a direction he saw fit. Okay. Uh, one minor thing here, uh, Chris, could you let Liz back in? She's been kicked out of the meeting again. Barney. Sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I would like to like to touch on communications. We have communications with practically every department. Um, under the circumstances, what we're trying to streamline our budget all the way around, would it be, not behoove us to uh, do an RFP for uh, cell phones and also what we're doing with our, our, our telephone service? Um, I mean, how many, how many people in City Hall are given cell phones uh, to work with that uh, were the cost of that? Um, where are the cell phones coming from? Um, the, uh, I, if I may, I can address the cell phone. It's Chris. Um, our contract for cell phones is off of a state contract with Verizon. So we are getting state pricing, which is um, very nice pricing for getting unlimited data that's um, public safety, which is prioritized. Um, we don't ever pay for the actual device itself. Those are provided for free or occasionally we pay 99 cents. Um, there are certainly other providers out there that we can explore. Um, historically, Verizon has been, has had the best coverage in specifically in Williamsport. And so that's why we have stuck with Verizon. Um, I know there are I, certain places in the city where we don't have good cell service. So, you know, that's yeah, important. And Verizon is, is, was historically um, probably the best. Um, we have it in RVT, actually we use T-Mobile. Um, but the problem with T-Mobile is there's issues right in the downtown area. Um, so, you know, it's, it's sort of an all an, an ever evolving thing and we can certainly look at other, other options, but we are getting um, pretty good pricing for the actual service that we have. Um, services that you can't really get on the open market because they're governmental services. Well, and, you know, under the circumstances, like I said, because we're trying to cut as much as we possibly can and look at where we can get the best service for the best buck, uh, I think we're we're questioning a lot more at this point to sure. make sure that this is happening. Absolutely. Thank you, Chris. Sure. Any other questions from council on page 19? Okay, let's move to page 20, just a little bit there to finish up on this one. Great. Um, 
general, or excuse me, supplies and materials, general office supplies, 2020, 3,500, uh, 2021, 700, uh, COVID-19 supplies, 2020, zero, um, and then in 2021, zero. Support equipment, 1,500, and 2020, and in 2021, 250. Subtotal supplies and materials, 5,000, 2020, and 2021, 950. Total department expense, 2020, 388,415. 2021, 286,632. Um, and quite frankly, the, the general off supplies could probably even go down a little bit. I know it's not that much uh, as it is, but we really don't do much with that. Um, same with support equipment. We kept a little bit in there, but you know, that's two, another two areas that if council so chooses, uh, you know, it's like paper and pens and things, so. Um, that's why we decreased it so drastically. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, questions from council? Not a whole lot there, but. Okay. Um, no, no more questions on that. Thank you, Mayor Slaughter. Let's move to uh, department streets and parks. And Mr. Winder. I'm in the Public Works Office of the Director, um, Personnel Services, salaries $176,594, FICA 13600 life insurance 950 workers' comp 5800 pensions 77241 health insurance 74000 Subtotal personnel services, 348,185. Purchase of services, tra training and travel, 2,000. Office rental, 4,600. Contracted services, 15,000. Subtotal purchase of services, 21,600. Supplies and materials, general office supplies, 3,000. Support equipment, 2,500. Telephones, 4,000. Subtotal supplies and materials, 9,500. Total department expense, 379,285. Uh, questions on that page, anyone? Mr. Yoder. Um, yeah, a couple, um, a couple questions on this one, um, under the salaries tab, it looks like we're around 24,000. We're spending 24,000 less this year. Um, wh why is that? I I'm struggling to remember what that is off the top of my head, Adam. Um, that's a good question. Uh, that's the, um, decrease since Adams moved to his new position, we're yes. not funding a full-time uh, general manager. So the actual estimates coming in under because that position has been vacant since uh, mid-year. Gotcha. We should have about another 10,000 or so in there. If I remember his old salary was in the mid sixties. Uh, but there's also, there was a starting rate for the engineer and then there was a bump after six months with um performance evaluation i believe and that came out of the um i got you okay yeah, yeah. the engineers and the salaries of the job uh, yeah this department okay there's three um, positions. and then what's the uh so what's the 10k increase year over year from 2020 to 2021 under the um under the salaries line item what's what what is that is it new people yeah it, no it's raises? it's the it's the engineer at the, the rate that he was hired at. It's bringing the rate up into the, the current. I don't have. Gotcha. You see what I'm, does that, that make sense? Sense. I get what you're saying. Okay. That makes sense. Um, a couple of just general. So as I've been going through and thinking of ways to, um, to stream down um, the budget to minimize the tax increase or try to eliminate it, something that, um, that I had noticed um, that something for um, the mayor to consider 
um, and the rest of council, um, you'll see the purchase of services and then the supplies and materials um, sections throughout the budget are going to, um, they, they've all come in under budget. Um, now, obviously I, I understand this was a odd year, but um, from what I understand and what I can see at least, and from talking to constituents, it doesn't seem like we've really had a, a fall off in services. Um, and, and if we can come in considerably under budget, if we're looking for ways to save money, um, it seems like we, if we budget based on what we've spent, um, we can minimize our budgeted expenditure for next year and then therefore offset the tax increase. So um, with this page specifically, with purchase of services, with supplies and materials, um, if we budget for what we actually spent this year, we'd save $7,900. Um, if we'd budget, um, that's under purchase of services. If we'd budget for what we actually spend in supplies and materials, we'd say $1,500. Um, you go through that throughout the entire budget, that adds up to a little over $400,000. Um, now, obviously, there could be things that I don't know, that we don't know as far as, you know, there could be something that big that didn't happen because of COVID, but um off the, off the top of my head, it seems like that is a way to, for us to um, minimize the, uh, the proposed tax increase. So Adam, um, under purchase of services and supplies and materials, is that an accurate assumption to think that that's something that could be controlled if managed correctly year over year like it was this year? Absolutely. So there you go. So that's all I got under on this page. If and I can yeah, go ahead, make an observation, though. Yeah. All right. Um, but I, I, not that that's not a way to um, shave money off off each uh, department this year, Adam. But my my one comment on that would be: I, I think that we do, and 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 maybe Joe Poplock really is the better person to address this. We do over budget slightly in many of these areas year over year. That's, that's why every year we see a, a, a small return. That, that is to say, you know, when, when, when all the expenditures shake out um, sometime in the first, after the end of the first quarter, um, we, we see more money in our bottom line than we were expecting to. Um, and, and so, and, and every year we keep shaving a little bit here, shaving a little bit there. There's a little bit less money in the, in the bottom line when everything shakes out. Um, if, if we do that, yeah, probably this year it would be sufficient to, um, to shave off a, a substantial chunk of change from the budget. Um, but if we have any reason why we would need to spend more money than that, then we don't have that flexibility in the budget. It's not, it's not that we are encouraging people to spend the amount of money in those small budgeted lines. Um, it's just that, uh, we do want to have a little bit of flexibility so that we're not, if we, if we, I believe that this year's budget drops our bottom line to $178,000, um, 179 effectively. Um, if, if we shave $400,000 in basically small change off of um, all the various and sundry departments throughout the city, and then for some reason we, we, those expenses increase, we don't have a lot of bounce room. If, if yeah. No, I completely understand. I mean, if, if I mean, and, and if I remember the past couple of years, um, you know, you've brought that point up a lot um, and that in turn, it's really deficit spending. Um, and even by eliminating the tax increase or minimizing it, we're still deficit spending, unfortunately. Right. Um, you know, at some point we have to live within, learn to live within our means. Um, and it's unfortunate we're not there in this budget. Um, you know, I think, uh, a lot of last year um, in, in, in talking to the electorate, at least with my campaign, um, there was a lot of appetite for that um, in the city. Um, and I mean, the results showed that. I mean, Mayor Slaughter, you had a lot of the same messaging out there um, and you had a pretty big mandate to, um, to win the mayor's office. Um, and uh, unfortunately it doesn't look like we've done that this year. Um, and I don't know um, I, I have a lot of my own ideas of how we can do that. I think council has a lot of ideas of how um, we could do that as well, but um, I don't see a lot of that in here, at least from the mayor's perspective. Um, as we go through this, I'd love to learn 
um, about how the mayor um, would like to potentially live within our means. Um, I, if, if it's in here, I'm not seeing it. So as we go through this, I'd love to understand, uh, Mayor Slaughter, what you're seeing and, and, and what you've learned in your first year as far as living within our means, um, because uh, there's a gap between um, what I think the people were looking for last year and what we're seeing this year. Um, and maybe that, maybe what we do here, um, as we start to dive into this, I mean, I have a lot of ideas as far as how we trim the tax increase, but Mayor Slaughter, maybe if you're interested, um, you know, we can continue to go through this and have a discussion about, at least from council's perspective, what we see here, but, you know, maybe you take this back um, and, uh, and, and, and look to um, come up with a second round of, you know, maybe there's some other ways that we can save here and there and what have you. Um, that might be that might be fruitful. Um, that might be beneficial for all of us and um, show us working together to to trim down this tax increase. So, just some perspective. If if I yeah, go if ahead, Liz. Well, um, and, and once again, in terms of just distinctly budgetary impacts, it's probably wisest to defer to Joe Pavlov, who understands that way better than I do. Um, but from a, a, a sheer planning and looking at the budget perspective, I think what we need to bear in mind all the time, whatever soapbox anybody got up on last year, um, is that uh, for better or for worse, the city has X number of, of employees. Those X number of employees, by and large, um, cost more money every year. Um, that is not a commentary on the employees. That is a general fact of life, whether you work for the city or whether you work elsewhere. Most people get raises time to time. Um, most people's healthcare plans increase in cost time to time. Um, most people's pension plans might increase in cost as ours did dramatically this year due to overarching decision-making on pensions. Um, None of that is saying that, we, that the city doesn't need to trim our budget as hard as we can and look to economize in every quarter that we possibly can. What it is necessary for us to realize is that there is, is frankly only so much we can do as a city to trim expenditures. Um, and, and we need to be as creative as possible. And Adam, believe me, I am really looking forward to hearing your ideas and to talking to you about those that I have. Um, but, uh, but um, for us to, the, the, uh, there, there's a difference between deciding because we, are, because we are in some truly dire straits this year related to the pandemic and its after effects on our 2021 budget, um, deciding to cut certain expenditures this year that we would ordinarily make, um, and, and between simply deciding to, to trim all the, the tiny little bits of um, extra padding that we put into our budget out, um, because trimming, trimming the, the padding makes the budget more accurate, yes, in the long run, and, and may or may not be a bad thing. Um, but trimming the padding and then cutting that from the bottom line effectively just leaves us with no cushion. Um, so I, I would suggest if, if we're interested in trimming the padding out of each of these individual lines, Adam, um, which, which might be a wise idea, um, it, would, it would take some time in a meeting, um, but that we, we take all that money and drop it to the bottom line. And then it all becomes a transfer if that's if, if if there's more money needed somewhere, which is which also adds a bit of a headache. But we leave the money in the budget, we take it out of the places where we think it's not necessary, and then we evaluate that next year. Um, that that seems to me like perhaps a, a smarter way to look at that particular kind of spending. Um, I guess I, I and I'm not I'm not trying to um, to, to lecture here in any way, shape or form. Um, but it's, this has always, ever since I got on council, it's, it's been every year a grind of knowing that there's, that there's never enough money to do the things that we think should be our priorities and, and, and knowing that we need to, to trim and cut and, and be as conscious as we can. Um, and, uh, and while uh, every year we seem to discover a way to economize. And I think that's fantastic. It's, um, I, I don't, I also don't think that there will be any uh, measure that, that saves us in the long run that is within the city's power. Um, you know, and any, any way in which this pressure comes off next year, any way in which we discover some sort of a, a magic pill um, that, that, that makes this easy. Uh, it is, it's simply a, a matter of, of 
trying to trim where we can and um, and and trying to be respectful of the city's taxpayers, but also of the city's employees um, and and know that 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 um, everyone is doing their best to economize on, on the part of the city as a whole. Um, and uh, I said way too much. So I'll yield the floor to somebody else. <laughs> Thanks. Just if I can jump in real quick, I, I mean, I agree with a lot of Ms. Mealy's comments um, and I, I caution if we're, we're looking at 2020 estimates compared to um, some of the 2021 proposed, you know, earlier this year, uh, we did try to uh, encourage departments to cut their spending by, by certain amounts based on what we thought based on, um, you know, some, uh, some period of shutdown and other things. So I, I, I would, caution on um, taking too much out because once you start taking it out, you're going to have to add it back in at some time. Costs are going to go up um, and it, it's going to hit you um, there also. So. If I can chime in real quick, sorry. Um, basically because with the streets and parks department, we maintain every building. We remain, we maintain every piece of property, um, every roadway, every traffic signal we have our hands in everything with every department. Um, you can trim these minimal items, but um, realistically, when Mayor Slaughter requested all department heads to give what they truly believe their departments needed, we had to sell him on those items. And the biggest issue is for years and years, the can just got kicked down the road. I mean, Streets and Parks is running 23 year old trucks plowing snow that break down every day. Um, you have fire headquarters needs a whole new HVAC system. You have issues at city hall. You have, we just replaced the playground because it was outdated, destroyed, whatever. We have a swimming pool that costs thousands and thousands of dollars a year in wasteful water because it's got cracks in it. Um, that's the biggest issue. Everything's gotten kicked down to the can has gotten kicked down the road so far that now, unfortunately, the person that came into the seat now as mayor has to decide whether He's going to try to fix the issues, which may cost taxpayers a little more now, but less later. Or do you just kick the can down the road even further? And unfortunately, that comes back to council as well. Um, I've been doing this for four years. We fixed a lot of issues. We brought a lot more things in house. Um, you know, we cut every possible angle we can. Last year, we received the third shift sweeper operator back to, you know, try to cut back on overtime and different things with graphics runs, snowstorms, et cetera. This year got taken out of the budget because it was a way to save some money. I'm not going to guarantee it's going to, but there's that possibility. Um, as we go through the streets and parks budget, you're going to see, I need another tractor this year. I need another truck this year. The question becomes, do we buy new equipment, try to keep things going, um, or do we just keep dumping money into old equipment, hoping that we can plow the snow, we can fix the buildings, we can keep the traffic signals working, um, things are just going to keep, you know, totally declining. And the question becomes whether or not we're going to have the money to fix it. I mean, if you want to cut support equipment or whatever out of there, you want to cut some streets out, that's council's choice by all means. But, um, logically we're stuck in a position where we got to decide whether we keep people moving down the roads, we keep the roads safe, we keep the signals working, we keep this stuff working, um, or do we just keep cutting to the point that we can't even do our jobs or, you know, successfully do it efficiently? That's my spiel. I'm sorry. Thanks. Uh, I think it's a good discussion. It's, um, it's philosophical, but it's also practical. And, uh, you know, it's good to have a free open discussion about it. I mean, and we've talked about this before. Um, and the, the main factor in, in driving the city budget is personnel. It's, it's 80% is in salary and benefits. And it's a repeating cost that is the kind, that's the kind where you save where you save money when you reduce that repeating and growing cost, whereas some of these other things are, are one-time savings. And not to say that it's it's also something that should be diligently looked at, but um, to really address 
the city's ongoing financial issues. Um, you're talking salary and personnel. Either that or dramatically increasing revenue in, in different ways. And it's not to say that can't be done. And actually, we probably need more um, of a strategic planning way to do that and, and a dedicated way to do that, not just hoping it'll happen or um, uh, concentrating on the, the things that are already in the, the queue, but um, planning ahead for how we bring that development in. Uh, uh, an increase in revenue uh, of any source. Uh, obviously, that was not gonna happen this year with um, how business was affected by the um, virus, but absolutely going forward, I'm sure that's the direction we're going to take because it's a matter of survival. Um, any other questions on page 23? Okay, let's move to 24. 25, the police, uh, parks department, rather. Parks department, personnel services, salaries, 293,926. Overtime, 15,000. FICA, 23,600. Life insurance, 1,450. Workers comp, 13,700. Pensions, 154,482. Health insurance, 135,000. Subtotal personnel services, 637,158. Purchase of services, heat, 1,000. Tree removal, 1,500. Equipment rental, 500. Brandon Park electric bills, 3,000. Waves Garden Electric Bills, four, $425. Bowman Field Electric Bills, 10,000. Memorial Park Electric Bills, 550. Young's, Wood Elect Young's Woods Electric Bills, 600. Water and Sewer, 1,500. Waves Garden Commission, 1,000. Festival of Lights, 2,400. Subtotal purchase of services, $22,475. Thank you, Mr. Wendy. Mr. Banks. I just had a question about the increase in uh, the Bowman Field item. The electric bill? Yes. Um, due to cross cutters not playing any games at Bowman Field this year, um, we did see an increase in what the city was paying for lights there for the facility, exterior lights, et cetera, for at nighttime. Um, typically during the crosscutter season, they pay all the, all the electric bills since the, but since there was no season and the unknowns of next year, um, we increased it just to make sure we were covered. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Winder, the, uh, the Festival of Lights, um, this year, um, are we gonna have as many lights up this year? Yes, um, all the lights will be the same. The only thing we will not have is the um, ceremony. Ceremony, correct. Okay. Um, the lights will go on December fourth. Okay. I know a lot of people are interested in that. Um, we need a little, uh, a little encouragement and a little joy and happiness uh, after the year we've all been through, and people appreciate that in the park. Uh, other questions from council on this particular page. Hearing none, let's go to page 25. Uh, Parks department continued, supplies and materials, gas and oil, 11,000, 
Uniforms, 2,300. Other park materials, 15,000. New trees and shrubs, 1,000. Brandon Park tree maintenance, 900. Equipment, 60,000. Subtotal, 90,200. Equipment repairs, vehicle repairs, 6,000. Repairs to other equipment, 9,000. Subtotal equipment repairs, 15,000. Other expenditures, Bowman Field improvements, 70,000. Subtotal other expenditures, 70,000. Total department expenses, 834,833. Questions or comments from council? Mrs. Katz. Let's discuss the Bowen Field improvements for 70,000. Um, Joe, what kind of uh, funding is for this? Uh, you'll see that later on um, this evening when we get into the capital projects budget. Uh, that was part of the, the commitment that we were making to uh, fund uh, the matching funds for the RACB grant um, over a multi-year period. Is this, this isn't the scoreboard then, is it? Yes, it is. It is the scoreboard? Correct. Uh, I don't, nothing's been really done with that, has it? No, but we need to have the funds on hand. I think that, I, I don't know the status of the uh, engineer working with Larson Design, um, but that should be uh, about to the point to be let. Yes. If I'm not mistaken. You're correct. Uh, the other area is new trees, flowers, and shrubs. Well, that doesn't cover a whole heck of a lot for the city. It does not, but um, we do use the Tree Vitalize grant um, as well as other donations. Um, we did plant 60 trees recently, um, Little League Boulevard, Campbell Street area. Um, that was all planted and we have 40 more that we're doing in the spring because the tree vitalized grant was extended into 2021 due to COVID-19. Explain to me the Brandon Park tree maintenance. Um, wouldn't that come out of the Brandon Park uh, commissions? Don't they have funding left in that? That is all in a CD. Um, I believe it's still in the CD. Um, so they don't necessarily have funding um, allocated for tree maintenance. I know there's some money left for beautification of the entrance, um, but I believe that's it. Okay, so that what you're saying really is that account is getting depleted then? Yes. And that was a, a, a donation from a, a private citizen, wasn't it? Yes, ma'am. Well, maybe somebody out there can donate some more money to help <laughs> keep the front of Brandon Park. That's what we're hoping. Okay, thank you. And uh, Mr. Winder, does the, the Shade Tree Commission have funds available? That is all through the Hazardous Tree Program. Mm -hmm. Um, which involves street trees. Um, that funding is used to purchase street trees, um, helps with the equipment for the forester. Um, we've purchased chainsaws, we've purchased a stump grinder. Uh, we've done different things to offset the um, general fund when it comes to the hazardous tree program. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Tonight on page 25. Um, hearing anything done? This is uh, 26 and 27. Streets Department Traffic Control, Personnel Services, Salaries 886, 634, Overtime 60,000, FICA 72,400. Life insurance, 5,250. Workers comp, 41,750. 
pensions, 463,446. Health insurance, 4,444, or 444,000, I'm sorry. Um, subtotal personnel services, $1,973,480. Um, purchase of services, water and sewer, 1,600. Light and power, 13,000. Street lighting, 62,000. Heat, 7,800. Beltway lighting, 6,500. Trash removal, 45,000. Contract services, 40,000. Recycle program, 20,000. Subtotal purchase of services, $195,900. Uh, questions tonight, Mr. Bank. Mr. Winder, what is the, what accounts for the increase in overtime is going up $8,000 from last year? It is the, we just added 3% for the contracted or the negotiated contract um, salary increase. Okay, so you're expecting uh, the same amount of overtime hours. Hopefully not, um, but due to the streets department being the front line to say with snowfalls, trees down, flooding, et cetera, um, they tend to work almost the most overtime and it demands the most amount of people uh, when it comes to a snowstorm or a flood event. And believe me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what are our contract services that we get through Public Works? Um, contract services through Public Works are for um, construction management. We do pay for um, MS4 coordinator through the Water Authority. Um, we've held that number due to the possibility of stormwater management fees coming out. You know, if things should move forward with that. Um, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, if John Sander would need, um, Larson design or whoever to help with a small project, something of that nature, do drawings of something for him for a project he's working on. Yeah, thank you. Mrs. Katz. Adam, why was there such a, a decrease in street lighting for 2020? What, what, what would be the difference? Uh, because we have put up so many LED lights. Um, and, the, and that's that much savings. Yes, ma'am. Um, that's why we try to put up, we try to put up like 40 to 60 LED street lights a year. Um, and we cover the cost of those with liquid fuels, which you'll see you know, later tonight with that. Um, when you go from a high pressure sodium bulb to an LED bulb, um, the amount of energy a high pressure sodium bulb requires to heat up, uh, you know, heat, to heat up the element and create the light to be bright is so significant versus an LED flat panel Cobra headlight that goes up. Um, we should, moving forward, we should keep seeing a decrease. That's terrific. I mean, that, that should prove to all of us to make sure we switch them all out in our houses also. I would not go with anything but LED. <laughs> so to piggyback off of what Bonnie was saying, why have we budgeted the same amount as previous if we're expecting a, a decrease? Only because, unfortunately, I don't know what's going to happen with this and you know whether we're going to be able to keep seeing a decrease or what's going to happen. I mean, you guys have to approve my budget to keep doing what I'm doing. So what you're saying is you need the money that's in that line item to continue with switching out the light bulbs. Right. If, I mean, okay. you could decrease that somewhat without a doubt. Um, energy costs could go up a little bit. Um, you know, I wouldn't cut it drastically, but we could definitely cut some money out. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Okay, let's move to page 27.
Streets Department continued uh, supplies and materials, gas and oil, 42,000, uniforms, 6,300, supplies and materials, 20,000, COVID 19 supplies, I've got nothing. Storm sewer materials, 7,000. Subtotal supplies and materials, $75,300. Other expenditures, paint, traffic, 18,000. Traffic controls, 15,000. Hand tools, 300. Vehicle repairs, 6,500. Traffic signal repairs, 8,000. Other equipment repairs, 800. Facility maintenance, 30,000. Bowman Field maintenance, 25,000. Repairs to radios, 7,500. Street resurfacing, reconstruction, 125,000. Brick street resurfacing, reconstruction, 50,000. Street resurfacing, city liquid fuels, $24,043. Equipment, 80,000. Subtotal other expenditures, $390,143. Thank you, uh, Mr. Winder. Question. Uh, yeah, Randy, I, I just have something. Yeah, John. Uh, again, I'm just curious. Um, so I'll, I'll take a look at the paint for traffic. Um, we had budgeted fifteen thousand. We've only spent one thousand one hundred and fifty-four dollars. Do we do we think that we're going to get close to that fifteen thousand dollar number by the end of the year? Yes, I'm just waiting for the invoice for the line painting that happened in the fall. Okay, um, that's what I, I I don't have it in there yet as an expense because I know we went over a little bit on our footage because of adding some additional lines that were requested by taxpayers on streets. Mr. Uh, Mackey, just remember that the numbers that you're seeing there um, through quarter three are back through um, September. So we've had October and November that's occurred since then. So there could be bills that have been paid and posted since then, just as an overall comment for the entire budget. Yeah, okay. And then, um, you, and then we, and then we, the $3,000 increase for, for 2021, but is that just due to the fact that we know we're going to have a certain number of lines we're going to have to paint, et cetera? Yes. Um, for all intersections, we're required every year to um, freshen the paint, we'll say, um, by PennDOT. Um, so when we do it, we just do all of the lines through the city. We do get on um, the West Branch COGS contract so that we get the best possible pricing because multiple municipalities come together and bid that out. Okay. And then, uh, of course, I, I mean, I, I brought this up before I got, well, before I got sworn in, I'll bring it up again this year and I'll probably keep bringing it up until it's gone. But what's your opinion on the brick street resurfacing $50,000? I really thought that was going to be your first question. <laughs> so I, I ran some numbers. Um, honestly, between vehicle repairs, plow repairs, um, money that we pay to citizens that call in and make complaints that they got damaged to their vehicle um, on brick streets, <clears throat> we're right around $225,000 a year is what it cost us in damages. Okay. So, I mean, I, and I've had plenty of conversations with plenty of people. Um, I think we need to redo the ordinance and get rid of all brick streets. Okay. You know, I'm in full agreement with that. Um, I mean, I'll give you another example. If you go to Wayne Avenue, we spent almost $50,000 there um, earlier this year having the bricks repaired. Um, I could do it all over again next year because they're destroyed already. Um, when you have concrete with you know, an inch and a half of sand on top of the concrete than the brick because that's the required way to lay the bricks. Um, water and sand just do not do well together. And then when you get winter coming, that's gonna freeze and everything else, um, it's repetitive motion. In my opinion, it's a waste of taxpayers' money 
you could pave the street and have it last 10, 15 years, we'll never catch up on the brick. And you, you Liz, said, are, Liz, are you are, breathing heavy right now? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Maybe so, a little. <laughs> But, but again, I, I will point out we're talking about, and and, may, and my estimates not might not be exactly correct, but about 0.8 miles of street here. And you just said we could potentially spend upwards of $200,000 on 0.8 miles of street. That just, I, I understand that there, you know, there's history and then there's history for history's sake. Uh, I, I just can't see it. Um, I, I have a question. If we... It's one thing to take the fifty thousand out. Um, if we, but if we're talking about um, getting rid of brick streets, then we're talking about paving. So that would be a cost we'd have to budget for, correct? Well, you could prioritize those streets as ones we paved that year. Okay. If they're in CDBG CDBG areas then you could naturally use community development block grant funds to pave those streets, which every year we struggle to find streets that need done in those areas that fit the criteria for that funding. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is we could budget in liquid fuels to do a little more paving and a little less of other things that we do with that money. Okay. Um, there is ways to do it. I mean, I, I'm not saying do it all in a year or whatever. Right. I just think that if we take areas that we feel that the bricks don't make a whole lot of sense being in because maybe they're not the historic areas. Um, you know, Wayne Avenue is a prime example where the school is. Right. We're running buses and everything else on a brick street and we're just repetitively throwing money away essentially and i mean no disrespect to anybody that likes brick streets um just you got you have that kind of weight running on a brick street it's not designed for that um memorial park area you have that little tiny brick area where you get a lot of traffic a lot of truck traffic um where fourth street comes out with oliver mm -hmm. not an area that's necessarily the best place for brick i understand the brick was there and we're trying to save it Etc. But you're just spending a lot of money. If you go to Fifth Avenue, where you have a lot of older homes, history, etc., maybe that's where we focus on saving brick, a brick street. I mean, just my opinion. I'm not. I'm just a guy with, that's saying whatever. I don't know. It's just a lot of money to waste every year, fifty thousand dollars, and we're not getting ahead on the brick streets at all. Right. Although just to make one small point, I don't think we're getting ahead on any of our streets, are we? Actually, thanks to UGI right now we are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they how so if we can just get UGI to do a bunch of work in the brick street areas? That would be fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I mean maybe we think about you know, stamping the brick into concrete so that you have the look of the brick, but maybe not necessarily the brick. Concrete would hold up a lot longer. Just a thought. Than brick, really? Yes, yep. Um, just out of curiosity, do you mean like at the points, you mean concrete's holding up a lot longer than brick, even in like the middle of a brick street, not just at like the places where, they, where it merges with other substances, right? Correct. Liz, look at the cross rocks in the city. That's stamped in, right? Right. Yeah, I know, and it's not holding up that well. That's my concern. Um, that's probably not the best example. Um, the larger area you do it, the more it'll hold up. Um, the issue with the crosswalks by like Cumming College, etc., is the, maybe it could be the quality of concrete they used. Um, but if you if you look at Bowman Field, we did the stamp brick in front of Bowman Field. Um, it's holding up very well. Are people driving on it? Yes. Like, yeah, I guess somewhat. But yes, uh, they, get, they get truck deliveries backing right up on it all the time. Okay. Um, I guess what I'm confused about is I don't see us doing a lot of work on most of our brick streets and I, and I still see this, the bricks in place. 
Um, I, I'm thinking about the ones that I travel on primarily, like over on uh, like Fifth Street, um, not Fifth Street, but you know what I mean up there where like Court and Fifth and all those up near kind of Rite Aid where everything sort of intersects up there. Du Bois. Yeah. Um, very we don't low traveled to... area. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, Rural Avenue mm -hmm. is a mess because it's heavily traveled. And the bricks are in place, but they sink down in because the sand dissipates underneath them. Got it. If um, they would come out with a better way to secure the bricks and give them the cushion they need other than sand, it might be great, but. But that's the current best practice? Yes, unfortunately. Pen dodge standards. <laughs> All right. Um, interesting. Okay. All right, I'm done breathing heavy, Randy. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that's fine, Adam. I'm not, I'm not offended. <laughs> I'm just asking questions. Thank, thank you for your honesty. I appreciate it. Good discussion. Um, are there anything else on this page for council? Okay, uh, Mr. Banks. Um, just as a general... For general information, Adam, where are we resurfacing next year? Do you have a, a schedule for that yet? Um, I can send that out to members of council. I know John just put together the bid documents. He was just waiting for the um, budget sessions to be over to make sure we held the number that he was putting out. Um, so I could forward that to everybody tonight, give you the streets that we're looking at. Um, naturally, if we reduce the number that we are looking to use, then we would have to reduce some streets, but. Okay. I mean, I, I'm definitely looking at that number, so it'd be nice to know what kind of impact that will have on, on taxpayers' travel, <laughs> their, their pocketbooks. Um, when I send it to you, I'll make sure it identifies um, CDBG, because that would be totally separate from the general fund or liquid fuels, state liquid fuels or county liquid fuels. Yeah, thank you. Um, one other to reference back, Mr. Winder to uh, UGI, um, are they gonna be doing a, a lot of streets again next summer? Cause I know at some point uh, they're gonna, that'll be winding down. Yes, um, I believe they're looking at another three years. Okay. Um, the the rough number currently between city and UGI would put it close to a $2 million street reconstruction project again, uh, plus the water authority. They're doing some work throughout the city again this year too, or 2021, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess we can move on, page 28. Department of Public Works, uh, flood control. Personnel services, salaries 103,220. Overtime 24,000. FICA 9,700. Life insurance 550. Workers comp, 5,300. Pensions, 5, 51,494. Health insurance, 39,000. Subtotal personal, personnel services, 233,264. Purchase of services, water and sewer, $125. Light and power, 37,000. Heat, 16,000. Subtotal purchase of services, $53,125. Supplies and materials, gas and oil vehicles, 5,000. Uniforms, 900. Flood control materials, 20,000. Departmental equipment, 10,000. Vehicle repairs, 3,000. Other equipment repairs, 10,000. Subtotal supplies and materials, $48,900. Flood levy certification, 100,000. 
MS4 Chesapeake Bay PRP, 200,000. Total sub, subtotal other expenditures, 300,000. Total department expense, $635,289. Thank you. Mrs. Katz. Uh, number one, Adam, on overtime. How come we had overtime this year? We had hardly any rain. Um, we did have two events, two heavy rain events where the water um, came up over the 10 foot mark, which automatically puts us into operating pump stations. Okay. And my next question is for Joe P. Uh, flood levy certification and MS4 Chesapeake Bay. Um, this is money that we have set aside uh, for this, these projects, right? This is additional funding uh, for future projects. Okay, this has nothing to do with any of the grants or anything? No, we have, I think we have um, in our assigned fund balance around 150 uh, from prior year uh, lines that have been underspent. This year, I'm only showing that in 2020, uh, we're proposing to spend 20. So that would be the maximum that we would set aside for future projects on the levy. And we're budgeting then 100 uh, to continually build that balance, the same as we're doing with the MS4 and, and Chesapeake Bay PRP. Matching funding for grants, I guess I'll say. Okay, that's what I, that's what I, my next question is, is gonna be for matches. Because I know there's, there's so much going on right now with what we're gonna do with the uh, uh, one part of the levy. Um, right, I, my understanding is the engineer has a project that needs to be done in one of the, and I, I don't have the right terms, but flood walls up there. Um, Memorial. Yeah, so there was something yeah. that he wanted to get done this year. It didn't happen, but he's gonna have to put a package out for it, uh, let a bid. Um, and then from there, uh, we can uh, utilize some of that money. I forget what his estimate was for that project. It's one, of the, it's one of the more expensive. It was one of the things that we wanted to do last last on, on the, the list, but it, it no, had to be, no, right? No, Bonnie, Bonnie is that not the one I'm thinking no. of? No, this just okay. came about when the Army Corps came through and did their inspection recently. Um, there is riprap that is completely missing along the levee where just south of the Forest Street Bridge, there's that slight curve in Lycoming Creek. Um, okay. It's starting to wash away the edge of the levee, um, which makes us concerned that it could become unstable at some point if we don't resolve it. Um, it's roughly fifty to $60,000 to have it repaired. So this is a new one on the project then? Yes. Because this didn't come to Public Works yet, so. I had no clue on this one. No, it was, uh, it's really an emergency repair, but like Joe said, we're, we're having trouble getting it all transitioned that quickly. John was working with the Army Corps. Um, they were going to see if they could possibly fund it. Um, that fell through. So now we were just working through how we could fund it. Okie dokie. This is where the lobbyists should be working. We have these funds here that we can use for that purpose. I know, but it, you know, you've got to have people out there working to get the funding that's possible out there. And every time we turn around, it's going to be a huge expense with the more we, you know, you look at the levy and the certification MS4. I mean, it, it just, you know, we haven't even broken ground in so many different areas and, and it's cost us so much money. And we still keep on going after funding and it's it's still not gonna cover all the expenses. I think um, long-term, uh, this is a maintenance issue that's gonna keep coming up. And again, that speaks to future planning towards a uh, possible levy authority or something like that. Uh, Mr. Yoder. Yeah, in regards to the MS4 Chesapeake Bay, um, stuff. Um, if the water authority was to take over the requirements for the city of that, is this something that goes away from the general fund? 
It would take them a couple years to get to the point that they would take that as well. Um, they would naturally want to start um, receiving revenue mm -hmm. on the stormwater authority side before they would fully take it all over. Um, but yes, in a few years, it would go away. Okay. They didn't want to take any responsibility with the levy project until it was completed, really. Other questions about this page? Okay, Seeing, hearing none. Thank you, Mr. Winder. I think I got one more. The fuels. Oh, okay, yes. Page 56. I went too far. Say 56? Yes. 58. 58. 58. Okay. Uh, projected revenues, um, liquid fuels state uh, 837,321, interest $6,000, surplus appropriated. $167,000, total projected revenue, $1,010,321. Projected expenditures, salt and cinders, 85,000. Street materials, 80,000. Street resurface construction, $302,821. Beltway lighting maintenance, 1,000. Storm sewers and drains, 20,000. Equipment purchases, 155,000. Hand tools, 1,500. Light and power street, 260,000. Traffic light and power, 30,000. Repairs to vehicles, 75,000. Total projected expenditures, $1,010,321. Thank you, Mr. Winder. Questions? Okay, don't hear or see any. Okay, thank you, Mr. Winder. Thank you. Now we'll move on to other miscellaneous fund budgets. I believe that's Mr. Pavlock. Yes, yeah, starting on page 55, I guess we'll start with the capital projects budget. Mm -hmm. uh, so under projected revenues, uh, 2021 proposed transfer from debt service, 850,000. Uh, that's residual funds for city hall and the, the levy projects. Mm -hmm. um, DCNR, uh, 145,000. Uh, First Community Foundation of Pennsylvania, 150,000. Um, actually, let me let me just put the projects with the, the lines as they go I go through. So I'm going to go back up to the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. The 145 is a large Los Park grant, um, which an application was sent out earlier this year. Uh, the First Community Foundation, the 150,000, are grant funds for the band show. Um, the next line transfer from Bowman Field is 150,000 on uh, matching Rackby grant funds for the scoreboard. Um, transfer general fund, 210,000. Uh, that is again, matching funds for the RACB grant. Um, there is uh, funding from, uh, that has been assigned in the fund balance uh, from 2019. Um, there'll be funds assigned in the 2020 fund balance and uh, the funds that were pro uh, proposed for 2021 will uh, comprise that $210,000 number. Um, the remaining RACB funds of 94,000 for the scoreboard project. Um, Crosscutters private match of 100,000 for the Bowman Field scoreboard project. Um, Lycoming County, 20,000 towards the Banshell project. Um, 
Bowman Field future years, 2021-22, uh, uh, 40,000 uh, for the band, or I'm sorry, for the uh, scoreboard. Um, the EDA disaster relief grant for 1,174,000 um, for the levy uh, design project for the uh, design for the Dewey Ave levy restoration uh, for total projected revenues of 2,933,000. Um, and then just summarizing the projects described above the uh, Bowman Field for the scoreboard, 594,000. Um, City Hall improvements, 350,000 from bond funds. Uh, Lowe's Park improvements, 145,000. Uh, that'll be matched with community development uh, in their budget. Brandon Park Banshell, 170,000. Um, and then the levy improvements uh, for the Dewey Ave I and T walls, uh, expenditures of 1,467,000. Um, that is the revenue uh, in the, the previous page of 1,174,000 with the remainder coming from bond funds of 500,000. Um, and then just to show the remaining funds um, from the bond uh, for future levy match, uh, 207,000 for total expenditures of 290, 200, or, I'm sorry, excuse me, 2,933,000. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pavlo. Question. On these sections. Um, just a couple for me, Randy, if that's okay. Yes, go ahead. All right. Um, so Joe, talk to me a bit about what, what our plans are for the 350 that we didn't spend this year, but are looking to spend next year in city hall. I just don't remember. There, it, that's all hinges, I believe on the, um, the direction that we, to. yes, I, I there, there's been no use. It'd have to be something capital of nature or capital right. in nature. Um, with a, a, a life um, that matches the bond life. So it'd have to be a long-term long improvement. Long-term improvement, got it. Um, understood, and we talked about levy. Uh, the, the band show we are projecting next year, um, I'm, just, I'm just looking at this. Most that, of these are that, things that, we're, that we believe are actually gonna come to fruition. Yeah, that's my understanding that the engineer is working with the foundation currently on that and is um, working on getting that off the ground. Okay, fantastic. Um, that's everything. Thanks. Um, the Lowe's Park improvements. Um, what are they outlined anywhere? <clears throat> Has that come before public work? Fine. The the uh, Lowe's Park grant, um, the, the resolution to submit the grant was, uh, Stephanie had brought that forward in um, April. Uh, it's resolution 9016. Uh, the amount that we got, uh, that, that we've received is slightly under um, the amount that was requested. So uh, we're going to need to get uh, a project put together um, out for design um, and then and then go from there as to how we move forward with the, the project that was proposed. Okay. I'd have to go back to the resolution to find out specifically what um, specific improvements were in there. Joe, I think, or Randy, you know, I, I know I know that there was a pavilion planned as part of the parks improvement. I think there might have been one extra sidewalk to provide some additional handicapped access and some in, an increase in lighting. And, and I uh, think all, now that, <laughs> Those are being brought up. I think that uh, resurfacing potentially of the basketball court. Yeah, uh, that was the last. Was another thing item. Said. Yeah, it seems so, to me that was the total project. Yeah, we're going to have to come up with estimates and find out what we can um, complete with or what additional funding we can um, secure um, mm -hmm. to, to to put a project together and then get it yeah, out for design. I think we have 290 in total for that, correct, Joe? Because it should have been should have been 145 from DCNR and 145 matching from CDBG. Well, it would have been matching, and I, I don't recall what the community development match was set at in their budgets. Um, 
Got it. Let's see. That's, that was in okay. last year's project. Yeah. So I can get that number as to what they propose, but they may have some flexibility as they close out things. Uh, but I don't want to speak for funds that they may or may not have. Yeah. Um, Lowe's Park was budgeted at 250 in 2020. Okay. So with that, I, I, I can't recall the estimates that were put together when the grant was submitted. I, I, I want to look back at that, but um, I can pull that and send it out to everyone. Like. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, comments on this case? Okay, um, let's move on to Act 13. Uh, Act 13, um, under proposed revenue, we're projecting um, or proposing for the 2021 budget, 375,000 uh, with a total revenue of 375,000. Uh, breaking that into expenditures, we're proposing 130 for street resurfacing and rehabilitation, um, 200,000 as we've been doing for the past number of years for um, the general obligation bonds and then continuing the investment or the, the building of funds for uh, graphius run mitigation uh, in the amount of 45,000 for total projected expenditures of 375,000. Questions? Um, Mr. Allison, can I have the floor? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, hey, Joe, I see that we're expecting um, a significant drop in funding from, uh, from this past year. Uh, I'm assuming that's related to um, drop-offs in gas and oil activity? It's the expectation that that's going to occur. I mean, the number in, in some years will come in over what we've expected. Um, this year it came in pretty much right on our, our budgeted number. Uh, so I always like to keep it a little bit lower to give us some flexibility if wells do drop off. Um, it's not a number that I hear uh, or have insight to. So um, we try to budget and then if, if more money comes in then we can determine how we wanna allocate that whether there's a project that comes up during the year or adding to one of the uh, proposed expenditures. Great, uh, okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, hearing on, let's move on to uh, debt service fund. Page 59, the debt service fund budget. Uh, for 2021 proposed uh, transfers from the general fund, $713,700. Uh, transfer from other funds, $127,500. Uh, and as just discussed, transfer from Act 13, 100,000. That's half of the other half is for RBT. Um, then under projected expenditures, transfer to capital projects, 850, which was the City Hall improvements and levy improvements previously discussed. Um, and then we have payment of long-term debt uh, of $515,700 uh, and interest expense on long-term debt, $365,500 and interest expense on short-term debt, $60,000 uh, for a total projected expenditures of 1,791,200. Questions on this? I've got one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Joe, what's the rather dramatic increase in our short term interest expense? Uh, that is the uh, CNN note. Uh, it, that's something that we have to, to carry forward for the East Third Street project. That will just go through. I, I think that that note expires and wait at the end of, or the, the drawdown period ends at the end of. 2020, I think it was a two year drawdown. Mm -hmm. um, so from there, we'll have to determine uh, whether we turn that out and continuously continue to use those funds or um, pay it off with the grant funds received. Got it. So um, 
basically we have we've currently drawn down the entire two million dollars uh yes okay and we're waiting for potential reimbursements and then we'll determine whether or not we want to turn those reimbursements into paying off the loan or whether we want to right. utilize them for other things the um, grant reimbursements will go towards the loan um we're setting it aside in a specific account uh, and then we'll have to determine whether we want to use those and pay it off or hold it open for I, I believe last year it was discussed um, levy or graphius run other other bigger projects that we you know need matching funds for grants that may be secured or, or mm -hmm. however. Can I ask that the administration update the finance committee um, as they begin when those reimbursements arrive um, or that is to say as the as the thought process evolves there I think it would be helpful to know what our plan is um, for that money. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Joe. Other questions on this section? Okay, seeing none, let's move on. Uh, City Hall Operating Fund. For the 2021 City Hall Operating Budget, um, the projected revenue for rental income interior, 250,000, rental income exterior, 2,100. Um, for proposed expenditures, uh, life insurance, 275,000. Supplies and materials, 11,500. Telephones, 43,000. Water and sewer, 2,700. Heat, 18,500. Electricity, 34,500. Repairs to other equipment, 5,000. Facility maintenance, 75,000. Contracted services, 45,000. Contingency, 35,000. Furniture and carpet, 10,000. Machinery and equipment, 10,000. For total projected expenditures of $290,475. Questions on the operating fund? Just one for me, Randy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Joe, the contracted services refers to a, um, a, a custodial service that we contract with, correct? That's part of that. Um, also, um, as Adam had indicated earlier, uh, the individual employed by RVT that does the HVAC work, uh, when he would come in to City Hall uh, to, to perform maintenance or improvements or or modifications to our HVAC system, we would use this account to uh, reimburse his services. Ah, okay. Um, I guess I, I just wanted to ask um, if we, how, how our contract for custodial services is working out. I, I, um, has, it, has it been a positive move for the city to, to go to contracting that out rather than, than having an in-house custodian? Uh, yeah, I believe that there's less cost. Obviously, you don't have the legacy cost for hiring a full-time person. Um, right. the, the, the medical benefits and things of that nature, it's always been a low-paid position. Um, mm -hmm. So, But when you put everything together, you know, I think that the cost of contracting it uh, versus um, having someone in-house, uh, I, I think that we need to establish uh, potentially how much work that needs to be done. Um, obviously when you contract out, they're there for a short period each day. It's not to say that they can't get the work done efficiently. Um, it's just a matter of um, making sure that we get everything done, especially in today's day where uh, cleanliness and sanitation is a, a priority. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. That was everything. Thanks, Joe. Are there any other questions? Hearing none, uh, we'll move to unemployment fund. Um, under the 2021 unemployment compensation budget, uh, for projected revenues uh, for 2021, $10,000, uh, transfer from utility fund, 5,000, uh, for total revenues of 15,000, and then under projected expenditures, unemployment claims paid, 15,000 for a total projected expenditures of $15,000. Thank you. Uh, questions on this? Hearing none. Um, let's move to full repairs capital fund. 
okay, this one's going to take us a while to get through. <laughs> so for the 2021 pool repairs capital fund budget, um, transfer from general fund, $2,000, and then the available surplus of $108,914. Uh, for total projected revenues of one hundred and ten thousand nine hundred and fourteen dollars, uh, with no projected expenditures. Okay, I hope that holds true. Um, questions on this one? Okay. Uh, hearing none, then. Um, no, this will be fine. Are we good? Council? Okay, we're done with the first night of uh, budget review. We'll move to announcements. Budget work session number two will be held this Wednesday, December 2nd at 7 p.m. remotely. Upcoming meetings, uh, Tuesday, December 1st. We have 11.30 uh, a.m. public safety, 1 p.m. finance committee, 2.30 p.m. public works. I'm not sure, I think only finance is meeting. That's correct, Randy. Yes. And the ad hoc is on the 8th. Yes. And the ad hoc meeting, uh, committee is the 8th. Um, Friday, December 4th, uh, 11 a.m. ERC. I guess that's tentatively. And then um, our next uh, regularly scheduled city council meeting will be this Thursday, the 3rd, at 6.30 p.m. remotely. Um, any comments from council members tonight? Okay. Good job on, on the first night. Um, comments from the administration? I'm from the administration. Um, are there any uh, comments from the public? I didn't, I don't, didn't think we did that for these sessions since they were work sessions. All right. Um, 